My name is Eugene. I'm the tournament director at Texas Card House Dallas. I have some exciting news for our tournament players in 2023. We will be starting a tournament rewards program that is offering a $15,000 free roll quarterly. And there's two ways to qualify. One, you can be top 20 on our money leaderboard. Two, you can be top 25 on our loyalty rewards leaderboard. Follow along at texascardallas.com for more details. Your adrenaline is pumping. Over $20,000 is on the line. The clock is ticking. Buzzer beater bad beat has begun. The famous Texas Card House bad beat is back. Take your shot to win big. Be in any Texas Card House when it hits and you get your share. $100 cash in your hand. The bad beat jackpot rises every day and the qualifying hand gets easier and easier each day. Just by being checked in, you're a winner of $100, no matter which Texas card house you're in. Texas card house is the only poker club in the state offering you this. Come into Texas card house all spring to win. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to TCH Live. My name is Derek. I'm joined by a special guest commentator today, Alfred, one of our dealers here at TCH Dallas. Also, a really good pot boy in Omaha. So I figured I'd bring him on with a little insight. So I'm not, so I'm not talking completely, uh, you know, um, without, uh, out of my realm here. But I'm uh, super excited to have you on, Alfred. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to be on. I've, I've watched uh, some stream in the past and I've, I felt like uh, I could maybe add a little bit to what the players are trying to do in certain spots. Uh, nice to come on. No, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, and I mean, so I've dealt a lot of these players, of course, you have too, um, but you've really played with a lot of these players, so you can really offer a lot of insight in terms of like what their mindset might be in certain spots and, um, you know, what they might be thinking. So let's go to the action right here. They're doing, a, they're doing the, I think they're doing a $50 flip there. Or a hundred dollar flip, one or the other. It's like fifty. Yeah, I hope everyone in the chat is excited for our special five-five straddle PLO stream tonight. Uh, it's been a while since we've done a PLO stream, and we think we've got. Uh, better get back in the mix of things. And looks like they're starting off with a flip, and it looks like a flush is going to take it here. Queen high flush for Dustin. And this table is chock full of regulars here. Seat one. Uh, Faisal, seat two, JP, the organizer of the stream, actually. I think he requested certain players, certain dealers even, uh, for our live stream. Seat three, Rebecca, probably a high-low uh, expert, um, but, you know, decided to hop into the PLO streams here. Uh, Clarence, seat four, seat five is going to be filled by uh, J or YL, I believe, um, also known as Jimmy. Uh, seat six, Mike. Seat seven, Dustin. Seat eight, Ryan, aka Rye Guy, and seat nine, Gary, also known as GMM, here in our room. So a lot of regular players here, and right off the bat here, it's going to be five, five, ten, with a twenty dollar double straddle. It looks like it's a lot of action already. To start off here. Carter, your chips don't go there. This isn't the jackpot. Of chalk <laughs> yeah, I can tell you, this is quickly going to probably <laughs> turn into a five, ten quarter straddle if I had to guess. Um, probably an hour in or so. I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I know these guys, a few of them are going to be like, hey, everybody's going to do a quarter. You know, with, with the hand, hands, I mean, the hands are going to be pretty rough to read, I imagine, pre-flop, because um, I imagine we're going to see a lot of multi-way action. So I imagine we'll keep, we'll try to keep our commentary uh, limited to maybe some of the heads up or maybe three-way action, but uh, it's just, there's no way of really commentating on the, uh, even the strategy, right, six ways. Correct, because especially pre-flop, Unless, unless you're getting these all-in situations, the equity, as you've heard before, is probably pretty close. As in, Dustin just crushed that flip to the top set. That's yeah, top set on a pretty dry board here. Obviously, a very obvious Broadway draw. Anyone could really have the 9-10, King-10, Ace-10. And it looks like 
JP will pot it here on the flop. Dustin is probably going to check raise here. Oh. He called. Okay, he's got it locked. Yeah, interesting that he just decided to call on that flop, given that, I mean, hands like Ace-King-10 has a, a, lot a lot of equity, right? A lot of hands can continue there, so um, I can see both his thought on both. Uh, let a card peel, maybe a safe card, and then take over. Um, or because they're not super deep yet, I would lean on. I thought I would lean more on the strategy of just pressing it, okay. raising it, just trying to get it in against, especially being like out of position. A set, another set, um, yeah. In maybe this game, even like a queen jack. Yeah, in this game, position is everything. Um, so it's just hard for him to maximize after the turn of river. JP is he's a decent enough player to where, um, like on a turn like that, he's just not going to continue with any straight draw. Exactly, right? yeah. and they're not too deep yet to where. Um, yeah. um, it, it, it would be a mistake for him to check raise up there. He can get most of the money in on the flop. JP probably still folds just because he has a gutter and a back four flush draw, but I think that probably would have been the... the I, thought, I thought he might do that. Or, or, or if he didn't want to check raise, just go out, go ahead and leave the flop. Do something like that. But, uh, nice pop yeah. there for Dustin to start yeah. off the action here. It was, uh, How are you raise that yeah. shit? It was pretty standard, though. Like, that's, that, that's pretty standard. Welcome everyone in the live stream chat. We got all our <laughs> usual suspects in here. Jedi Master Ted, TLS6362, Rena, JTM, and Y. want the flip and the... Frank, oh, Kicker Problems. The Thank you all so much for tuning in. Hope you all are ready for a little bit of a different, different stream here. PLO, 5-5 five, five, Straddle. Nick, uh, well, yeah. who wakes up with Ace Ace 5-5? Five, five. All right, Rebecca. Suit. That's pretty good. Suited to the Ace of Clubs. It's uh, pretty strong. And when we're talking about a few of our players here, um, where you know their strategy tends to be, you know, pretty loose passive pre-flop, and then really just trying to see what they can do on the flop to navigate, or maybe even try to represent something um, that they don't have. Interesting flop here is I see two two hands with flush draws. So this is actually an interesting flop with Becca hitting a set of fives. There's a lot of bad turn cards, so I can definitely see her slowing down and just calling here. Yeah, no reason I think to just to raise. I don't, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't really play peel out often, but without any backdoor equity, you're really kind of depends how much how much variance you want to enter in your life. It's uh, again because they're not super deep yet. It wouldn't be the worst. It wouldn't be. Uh, it would. I don't think it'd be a mistake if she wanted to get it in here. I personally wouldn't. But see, that's good. The way she played it is probably how I would play it. Yeah, call, call flop, and then because uh, she has position. Yeah. So when you're in position, you just have you have more, more options. Um, PLO and position is is important in hold'em, but I think it's I, it's three times more important. Three times. Oh my goodness! Like if I, I did an experiment once where it's like I literally just played the button <laughs> in one section, <laughs> and it like. You win. <laughs> like you can literally just day day. you can literally just play the button in PLO. It, of course, it's gonna cap how much you can win, but I just wanted to see what would happen. And yeah, it's it's so powerful. You're probably a little surprised, actually, right? Like more, probably more so than you thought. How important the button was? Yeah. Uh, well, I knew it was super important, but like I was, I, it was more of uh, it was more also a practice session for me in terms of forcing myself to play, try to stick more hijack cutoff. But usually if you stick with those positions, you, you can open your range up a little bit more. You have a hijack and cut off. You have a greater chance, especially if you're, if you're raising to, to gain the button, depending on who's behind you. So it was, it was more of just a practice thing, and I was surprised, but it was still a winning session. I was like, oh, okay. That's a good, good anniversary present. Right after. Yeah. On the next hand here. Obviously, because it is four cards instead of two, we're probably going to see significantly well, less hands. Uh, so it's even more important, <laughs> right, for these players to be more selective with their hands, right? Because in the same amount of time that you'd see premium hands in a you know, two-card game, you're, probably, you're seeing half of those hands, right, in a four-card game. So even less. So or, e or even less, right, yeah. Uh, so not even going to use the standard ace ace jack hand. That's, that's rare. So like a hand like jack 10, 9, 8, double suited. A hand that premium, like, like you probably see, <laughs> if I'm playing a full week, you probably see that once, maybe twice wow. in a week, playing six hours, uh, on average, five to six hours a day. Um, 
so because the combinations is so much different, it's 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 a it's either a little bit more, or a little bit less, but there's there's like there's like 225,000 combinations of hands in PLO. So it's just it's it's crazy. So you have that's reason why as you get more experience, you want to get a little bit more creative with your with your hand selection because you'll just be sitting, you'll you'll. You think you think you've seen a rock at hold 'em, wait till you see a rock at PLO because all they do is try to find premium hands. It, it can, you can have a very boring time <laughs> playing like that. Right, and obviously if you're playing say in a um, I mean for our viewers out there that may not have access to hourly rooms and they're playing in a rake environment, that's even probably more detrimental to them. If you know you're only waiting for the high, like the tip top premium hands. It depends. It depends. So if you come from an underground background where the rake is high, that strategy actually can serve you well, especially if you're not playing deep. So, so on an underground 2000 probably isn't that deep. So if you can wait for an ace ace uh, suited and like two of those cards are connected hand and you can get it in free flop. You can triple up. <laughs> that might be your one hand for the session. Exactly, yeah, and you yeah. only paid a fifty dollar rake, and you, you tripled up. Uh, I've, uh, I've back in the day, I personally had a, had a few of those nights where I I, I literally made a four or five thousand dollar profit and played two hands. <laughs> so it, it depends on your environment for sure. This environment actually is very conducive to a player that wants to play more aggressive okay. because you're not giving the money back. The money is staying at the table. So if you're a loose, aggressive player, these rooms are are gold mines for you. That might be why I imagine what, what call you? PLO has gone so popular in our room in the last eight months. Right? <laughs> it, it, we've gone. I tell people all of, all of this all the time. We probably went from having one to maybe two tables consistently to having five tables consistently on a weekday, right? which is just insane. And a lot of these people, they, they also uh, they they just want to play in an environment they feel safe. It's pretty quiet for the most part. Like, there's rarely any drama here. They just want to be, you know, they just want to play poker, you know? They don't want to deal with crazy stuff. And I think we, I think Texas Card House provides that in spades. So. All right, so we're going to have a five-way flop here. Uh, again, we're probably not going to bother <laughs> dissecting the hands until it breaks down a little bit. Okay, I see King-10-3. Multiple players with gut shots. JL top set. Yeah. JL with the top set, also known as Jimmy. Excuse me, I, said, I think I said YL. His name's actually JL. Is it King 6-6? Six, six? Yeah, he crushed it. So he just flops this essentially the nuts here. It's going to be a bet. Yeah, fold all the way around. Correct. It's a lock. So lock. this is one you, what you call a lock board in PLO. So when you get boards like this, either either people hit, either two people hit really strong or one person hits really strong and they bet and take it down. Um, it usually is a flop. Someone bets on the flop or the turn and the hand's over. Um, a monotone board um, is not as locked, but you, you, you have to be wary. Right? Yeah, you still get some of those same results. But it, you, 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 if you hit the nut flush or, or the ace high fl uh, flush blocker on a, on a monotone board, uh, you're still likely to still get some action. It's not as locked as it would be in multi, per se, uh, in a multi-way spot. <laughs> We do have dealer Brittany tonight dealing RPLO stream. Very solid dealer, dealer for the stream. Um, I ain't tell you what he told me to go Brittany for a year. She's a very good dealer. Doesn't make too many mistakes. Which is definitely something you want in a game like this. Uh, Just from a hand perspective, you're getting you're getting half to uh, two thirds of the hands you would see in hold them. So. Um, having dealers that don't make mistakes uh, is very important because per half hour down, you're probably seeing nine to twelve hands depending on how deep the hands go. So it's it's very important. It looks like Faisal will pot it here with the ace, ace, do six, double suited, pretty solid hand here. Obviously, that six of card would be a better holding, but two suits, I don't think you can really complain there. Yeah. We'll take it down here. Yeah, pretty standard there. Uh, the, uh, really to report on that one, that was pretty standard. I didn't look at my hand pretty flop, so. So, I mean, I haven't <laughs> done bad. too much uh, studying, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> it's like minuscule. To the, the, to the few strategy things I've looked up on PLO, that 
Oh, yeah. um, I think I think I've seen some people say like with certain hands, like rundown hands, you want to. Uh, uh, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. But it's like rundown hands. You want to be more. You're more. You're more likely to play multiway, or okay. want to play multiway, or then like okay, so hands that you consider premiums and hold them like aces or kings. You want to play as much heads up as possible. It depends. So, it depends. Okay. Um, I'd say. Um, I'm usually more aggressive with my rundown hands, the ones that are like nine, eight, seven, six type hands and above, um, just because if multi-way, when you have a suit, the more multi-way it is, the less that suit matters. They're, they more become blockers at that point. You're not really relying on that suit in the multi-way spot. So this is also a good way to uh, widen your three bed range, so people don't just automatically put you on ace ace blank. Because when they can just automatically put you on ace ace blank, you're never going to get any action with the. Oh no, you're going to get action, but it makes them they can play you perfectly. Right, right. It makes it much easier to play. They know which flop safe for you. They know which flop safe for them. And you can expand. You can add these to your. This is this is one of the this is one of those type of hands you can add to your to your range that that'll make you a little bit more tougher to play against. And you're trying to get those kind of hands heads up because uh, uh, get dead money in there, especially to get you're trying to get dead money in there because now you have enough equity to where, yeah, you can you can do whatever. It looks like we got our first heads up pot of the night oh, wow. here. Dustin against Rye Guy. I know these guys are pretty good friends here. Yeah, this is Dustin probably will. Dustin with a mass amount of equity here. Flops double flush. Yeah, the turns double flush. Yeah, you can't check anymore. <laughs> Yeah, you can't check in here. And they're not really going to play each other too tough. So in that spot, uh, in that spot, Rye Guy might have might have stabbed on the flop for someone else, but Dustin's a really good player, and he knows that he'll peel there uh, with, a, with a wide range of hands. So he, with him not really hitting that board, just, he played it pretty much hard with playing against Dustin. Just check, check, fold. <laughs> trying to get, just trying to move on. We have any new viewers joining us here tonight. Welcome to our our special Wednesday stream here, 5-5 five, five with a straddle. Hello, four-card game. You're going to hear commentary from Derek and special guest commentator Alfred, one of our dealers here at TCH Dallas. Also plays a lot of this game week to week. I imagine any week you come here at TCH Dallas, you can probably see Alfred dealing or playing this game here at TCH Dallas. I tell them that all the time when I'm commentating. I'm like, you know, if you come here any day of the week, you could probably find me here either dealing, commentating, or playing. Yeah, 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 One yeah. of the three. <laughs> Pretty much. Took a few days off last week just to you know, reset the mind, but 40. yeah. I'm usually in here playing or dealing. That's pretty much Did he say 40? 40, 40. I would actually It looks like Gary M. Did pot it in the cutoff here with the king nine five three double suited. So pretty loose, but uh, I, I, I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to gain position, which is what he did. So, um, it allows him to uh, play the hand a little bit more easily. Clarence here going to turn the second. Well, I guess actually technically the third nuts here. Yes, yeah, this is going to be a. Yeah, there's, they just don't have enough to do anything with. They're, this is going to be a full fold spot for sure. Uh, well, just try. Yeah, it's one of those one of those spots where people just don't hit enough to to do anything there. I see a question here in the chat, Reginald Cottrell. How often do they PLO? Um, every day. In, yeah, in the card room every day. Uh, in terms of the stream, uh, we haven't done it. Probably for a few months, but if this is something you, that interests you, let us know in the chat. Let's like see more PLO streams. Mm -hmm. yeah, in my opinion, I think PLO is, is a, I, once you. I mean, I, I try to explain to people like it's like the matrix. Like, once you've done it enough, all you see is redhead, blonde. It's, it's, it's the same thing. You have to get yourself used to it. But in my opinion, it's the funner. It's the funner game. You don't. You get uh, you get professionals, but they're much few and far between, and you don't you don't get those quiet tables where everybody's Hollywood. It's, it's a much more lively table. People are talking to each other. Has it, it almost has that home game feel where you just get to loosen up a little bit and, and you know have some fun. You know, I think it's a, a great game. Which fun is a huge part of the poker, where it should be. Yes. Right? Yeah. You played this game to have fun. In the, when you first started playing this game. 
no, it was four Everybody times in one got day. in this game yeah. for fun. For fun. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wanted the game to grow, then you should try to create such a, a, a st as fun of an environment as possible. Correct. That is in, in PLO, especially with the right good. crowd. Really <laughs> you'll have some incredible Sunday, memories Sunday, that you'll never forget. It's, so it's awesome. I love, I love PLO. Well, when you got, the nuts when you here got for Becca. On the turn, and it's it's so incredible here because obviously I, I'm I mainly commentate over no limit streams, so when you see the percentages change this drastically yeah, from, from, were, from from card to card, won, it, it just that, that boggles my mind. Like that's why the mistakes are usually bigger on the turn in the river because equities <laughs> become much more defined on the flop. It's still. There's, it, it, equities are pretty divided, usually, yeah, unless it's a lock board. It's on me now, but uh, right? on a, on a yeah, dynamic yeah. flop like yeah. Jack yeah. 8 yeah. 4, yeah. and you have top set, you can still get a. <laughs> right, with, but then there's like a flush draw, and then the turn comes another club. Exactly. They're bringing two flush draws. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can still be in a pretty tough spot, even with top spent on a, on a, on a wet board. It's, it's, a, it's, a, very, it's, a, it's a very dynamic game. Got another question here from Marina. Will there be streams next week during the cruise? Absolutely. Just because I'm going out of town doesn't mean the stream uh, production will won't be happening. You know, must go on. Yeah, the show must go on. Um, yeah, there's definitely going to be streams next week. And Reginald, yeah, we'll definitely keep that in mind if PLO streams interest you, because I know we have a lot of players. We'll have the player pool for it, for sure. It, it, it's just a matter of if there's enough interest on our stream. We get just the pure PLO, not even including the bomb pod games, we get we get five five to we get usually four one twos going, if not five. And the five five's been making pretty regularly lately, so which is really great. Yeah. yeah. You get a bunch of PLO every day. Like there's always a PLO game going at PCH twenty four seven. So I believe we had a straddle and then I believe a double straddle and then a, 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 ra a blind raise from my guy. Yeah. Oh, no, three blind right. raises, excuse me. Okay. Yeah. And, it, and honestly, that, that's one of the few games we would typically see this is, is PLO, is the blind raise, right? Because instead of, I mean, I guess in our room, we, we don't allow double straddles on the floor. So you'll see the, the blind raise a lot if they want to do something pre pot. You usually see it more in deeper games. They're still pretty shallow right now, so turning it into a... 40, uh, 2040 game and, uh, can make a can use a lot of action free flop that you wouldn't normally see. <laughs> so it, it's a, I'm surprised they're they're doing it this early, but yes, you, especially in the five five game, you see that a lot. But so yeah, I won't even I won't even bother reading off the hands yet until we clear off some players here. It looks like we'll start to check around here. Check around here. Gary M. With the nut flush draw, this can take advantage of that potting the flop here. Faisal, this is the top pair. Yeah, this is a very dynamic <laughs> board, so he can expect to get a lot of action uh, on a board like this. So um, it's one of those spots where he's uh, he's kind of uh, committing himself here a little bit. But JP here going to make the call with the open ender in second pair. Attack door hearts. <laughs> Usually on a board like this, he probably yeah. would have got two or three. So it's uh, he, it, this is very successful for him to actually get it down to a heads-up situation. Wow, look at this turn card here. Going to give JP trip sevens. Yeah, there he goes. It's going to be a check from Gary and an all-in from JP. What a turn card. The offsuit seven to give him trips and probably the pot. And yes, indeed, yep. Gary will fold. JP. But you see how JP didn't slow down there with trips because Gary still has equity there. In, in PLO, you are trying to deny people their equity as much as possible. You'll hear a lot with PLO players. Uh, I never give a free card. That's it's 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 very that's very important. Um, uh, you don't want to be giving free cards away in this game because uh, one, it makes you tougher to play against. Two, you get people to fold their equity there when he actually probably I, I didn't see the percentages but if I guess with what he had left, like 30 no, percent he had well. enough equity yeah. probably to just go ahead and see the river but because the board paired and JP was aggressive there he takes on the pot Oh, yeah, and the thing about yeah. PLO, right, it's like because even though – or it's a game that's harder to realize what your equity actually is, right? Because paired card on the turn, 
he might just have the boat already, and then you might be drawing dead. Right? Depends so on the player. That's, that's, yeah. we, well, that's the thing, though, right? It's so hard to figure out. With that two additional cards, it's yeah. so much harder to figure out where your hand even is yeah. within the realm of the other cards. It's just yeah, there's, there's such a, a difficult game. There's some uh, players, uh, if they put in uh, two-thirds of their stack, uh, they don't, they're not going to care what the turn is. Which is another great thing about PLO is uh, you have players that are there to, they didn't come here to fold. They're there to see the river. If they have a draw they like or a hand they like, they, they, they didn't come to fold. So, so it looks like we have a call from JL. Dustin going to raise it to 225 with the king, king, double suited. Double suited. Yeah, it's pretty standard rate. This is uh, what you call premium kings. So, and then a yeah. defend from JL with the queen queen double suited this time. If I was Dustin, he probably should be betting here. Uh, this is actually a board he can pretty much represent. He's either it's way ahead or way behind spot. Um, so, yep, yeah, there he goes. He does bet, um, which is what I would do in this spot. He he has, and this is something Holden players uh, can realize, realize. I have more aces than my opponent. I have more ace kings than my opponent. Sure. In this spot, he has he, he has all the sets, all he, the aces, yeah. all the eight. Yeah, so it's it's one of those spots that he can he can make it really tough on JL um, in that spot uh, to continue. Yeah, like the on only the, the only reasonable hand I think JL would have in that spot, right, would be uh, probably pocket aces with no suits. That would just decide to just call pre pop. No, or do you because think those hands would probably because they're pop it? because they're they're so shallow. Even with a even with bad aces there, um, if you can get it heads up. He bad probably ace. would have pre popped it there. Yes, um, it, it, bad aces. It, it, like this is one of those games. It's, if you're, if you're, if you can, if you can get, if you can get more than half your stack in pre flop, and you, and you think you can get it heads up, yeah. you really don't need to overthink this game. You just, you're just trying to get it in. And that's one of the reasons why I like to play a little bit deeper because people make bigger mistakes. But when it's shallow, because the equities are so close, pre usually. The worst you can be is a 70-30 dog, but usually that's usually the worst case heads up. So if if uh, if it's shallow enough and you, you can get your hand in with, with a hand where you know you have a little over 50% equity and you get in heads up, you, you should. Interesting spot here. Boyd going to open the action with the ace-ace single suit 9-8 oh, and so then Rye guy with the ace-king-king. King. This is going to create some fireworks. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised. He just has to call here, and a pretty big flop actually for both Rye Guy and Boyd. Oh, oh yep, Boyd. Yeah, he does, yeah. Boyd is uh, Boyd does not like does not like getting it in pre-flop. That's uh, fine. He likes to see a lot of flops. Right here for you. So I'm not actually surprised he's smooth called there. So let's see here. Rye Guy still has a gut shot to the nuts and backdoor spade. So I imagine he'll continue here for at least one bet. Yes, I do too. Oh, he oh, he's has a raise. This is very interesting here. I don't know if it's going to get through because he has, yeah, he has the open ender with backdoor flush draws. And you can look at the equities uh, here. Very, very close on the flop. 41% for Rye Guy. Boyd, 59%. Yeah. Rye Guy still has the Good gutter. Job, hit a back, king. Back he has backdoor flush checkings. draw. We have some leftover strength. Or not strength. Uh, wings yeah, and Boyd and does have the open wings. ender. Yeah. Rye Guy's uh, ace is dead, so like that, that's a... The equities are this close because the, the card reader is reading what's left in the deck, but the equities, and if you're just figuring your equity, like without that information, it's it's further away for sure. It's, more, it's probably more in that 70 30 range. And right off the bat here, we have a massive pot, $3,400 pot between Rye Guy and Boyd. Boyd currently in the lead. Let's go, see what the turn card brings. Oh, and right on the turn. Oh, right on the turn. No sweat. No backdoor. Anything. Wow. Where I got hits the nuts. I was trying to give it away. Wow. Wow. I saw that 20%. I was like, he's going to hit a queen. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a lot of percentage. Like yeah. So what? So I guess the percentage in the 41% is taking in the queen, the king, and then it's the backdoor taking, equity. Yeah, equity. it's taking into account that there's a lot of space still left in the queen. There's probably, all, probably like three Golly. queens. Golly. That's why. But the, if, if you don't have well, that information, Mal. right guy knew Mal. he was going to bad spot. You can tell by his expression. He's got a list. He, he, he knew his equity was, in, like, without that information is more like, 25 to 30 percent, so um, but it was one of those hours. spots where they were so short that he made the correct decision math-wise. Where it's like, oh, yeah, I gotta get in here. Once he raised there, and they're being them being that short, there's no other decision but to call. And that might be it for Clarence, unfortunately. GG's in the chat for him. I think that's gonna be it for him. We're gonna get a new player shortly, hopefully. I'm, I'm surprised, Clarence. Usually, 
is not a one and done kind of guy. He's usually an all nighter kind of guy. So yeah, he came ready with a drink in hand too. You got try a lot of times. Very quick night for Clarence, unfortunately. Trying. Ran his aces into the ace king king yeah, of Rye guy. Got a lucky turn there. But I mean, obviously, as we could see on the flop, the percentages were quite close. 60 40. Um, obviously, uh, Rye guy probably thought it was a lot worse than a 60 40, thinking maybe Clarence could have a set. Rye guy is actually a, a good enough player where, a versa, ha versa player like uh, uh, Clarence, he would have gotten. He could, if, if he would have played his aces like, like I would have played them there. Uh, Verse that player, he knows he, he pretty much would be heavily weighted to aces. He probably could have got away from that hand. Mm -hmm. Ace-King-King ace, ace, ace is one of those awesome situations why when you're, when, you're stuck, when you're not playing deep yet, it's one of those situations where he probably would have just been better served to play his hand straight up. Rye guy is a pretty good player. He's very good at hand reading. He probably would have just released it pre-flop. That's a pretty bad start for this hand. Yeah, no, I, mean, I think Boyd did pot it pre-flop. Boyd potted it free. Yeah. Okay, so right, right. guy smooth call. That's he a, just smooth called it. That's surprising. Yeah. That that's why it just went so they were so deep going onto the flop. It's that's just a, why. It's a single raise pot. Okay. Well, actually, it's yeah. not surprising. They're at right guy's out of position. That makes sense. Okay. No, that that actually makes sense because he doesn't want to be caught in a bloated spot out of position um, with a very. Um, uh, I guess it's one of those. It's, it's a hand where you know you either hit hit hard or you don't. Man, it's such a weird game. I, I swear I saw a right guy with like 10% equity on the flop, and now he has 92%. <laughs> uh, oh, he had, a, he had his, uh, his set, yeah. Or he had like 20% or something. Now he has 93. So I, I don't I don't understand this, understand this game, guys. <laughs> that's why. It, no, that's like when I talked to you, what, like last week? I was like, Alfred, I need you here. Because <laughs> I, I don't know this game. The percentages are really messed up because of because the, the because of the, the card readers. It's taking into account what's still in the deck. The Christian, thing, the Christian um, thing to have been. Looking at those hands. He would have been a dog, been, but I'm sorry, not, hey, the Christian thing. Uh, not, that, that, it wouldn't have been ten percent. He would have. He so should have had more equity. The, he might have been like twenty-five or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah obviously, you um, haven't seen him play lately. Make the yeah. D dogs belly up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. All right, so we are going to be continuing this game eight-handed. Um, you know, I guess going on that to topic of conversation, um, I do know another player that likes – oh, he also deals here. He likes to play a lot of PLO as well, uh, Ryan, the group. Uh, he, he literally likes PLO. Um, he says his preference is six-handed PLO. Um, do, do you have a preference on full ring versus six-handed versus maybe even less? I like four-handed. Um, four-handed, okay, so even less. No, 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 six-handed. No, no, you're right. No, he's right. Six-handed. I'm thinking of cards. Oh, yeah. So six-handed PLO is – they're different games. You've so six-handed PLO, never. like in yes, Hold'em, you, you can I see more flops. You have talked about it. Uh, uh, you see your position more. Um, you, you have – there's uh, there's, uh, there's more hands you can play. You can play a wider range of hands. You can play a wider range of hands. It's, uh, it's definitely uh, a game I love. Uh, Nine-handed, you got to play it different. You have to you have to keep it a little bit closer to the best. Um, and you're probably going to be involved in more multi-way pots. Exactly. Yeah. So, the, but it, it, just in, just like this is one of those fundamental rules in poker. The more, if you're one of the better players, the more hands you can see, the, the more your the more your profit's probably going to go up. That's um, so. Yeah, six-handed is definitely uh, a game I like. So, but it's live. It's just not. It's not conducive uh, to, especially to this environment. Yeah, uh, in a business where you want to fill seats. Imagine that. Exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. Couldn't imagine why. But yeah, no, I, I like sick a lot. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. It looks like Rob is trying to raise the isolate with the 10, 10, 9, 8. That's pretty, yeah. pretty hand there. That is exactly what he's doing. It's premium, but it's also because of its suit suitedness uh, being lower, like not not higher suit. You want to be trying to get it heads, heads up, up as possible. And then he flops the set. <laughs> flops in right off the bat. The nuts here for Rye Guy. <laughs> Um, but as you can see here, still a decent amount of equity for players Needless like Gary. Looks like he down but a just a little bit. <laughs> Turns is going to give him the world here. Yeah. Um. Ooh, this actually might keep Gary, and he he turns a gutter uh, in, a, in a pair of sevens. Um, Gary might peel another card here. Um, He's going to make some dinner tonight and bring up. He will. Yes. Uh, yeah. That, I I thought that card might. 
no place where you can put stuff out. Where you might keep them in. I mean, you know what I mean? Gary actually, no, he won't get a chance to stay. No. Right, guys, too. Yeah, it, hand is over. Uh, I think it, this right guy might check call here, uh, turn his can into a bluff catcher. Remember that. And Michael gets one of them. Uh, no, he's going to try to get value. Uh, that's a hard spot to get value from. Actually, so the front door hearts do miss, but there are back door diamonds available. It yeah. looks like Gary's going to just call with a straight, possibly. Yeah, actually, yeah. straight to the uh, the ten. That's what he's targeting. Yeah, that's he down bet three hundred, so he bet what is that? A quarter of the little little more than a quarter of the pot. Three hundred into eleven yeah. hundred. Yeah, that was a good down bet by Rye Guy to get some value for his flush. Yeah, he's that's really played there by Rye yeah. Guy to get value on every single street. Yeah, you know, kind of just size down on the flop, size up on the turn, and then bet the same amount on river. That he had on the turn, so uh, really know exactly what he's trying to target, which is he's trying to target exactly a straight there. Exactly. Any nine, any nine, or any six pairing a card on the board, or any nine uh, with a six. If Gary could have recognized that position, he, that's one of those spots where um, um, uh, blockers don't matter as much. That. You're so that, often losing to... That down bet is very polarizing. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, on the river. On the river. So, Gary actually had, did have a chance to steal there. He had enough behind, I think, where he could have gotten the pole. He would have had, like, 1,300 before that. Uh, so, he probably could have got uh, Rye Guy to lay that pin I flush down. And, but that, that's a tough spot to pull down. The line would have made sense, too, right? Yes. Uh, any, any reasonable hand with backdoor equity, with backdoor <laughs> nut diamonds, would definitely yeah. call that flop. Um, yeah. Obviously, hitting that nut door nut diamond turn, yeah. uh, they'd definitely call turn. And when they, when they hit the flush yeah. on the river, they'd probably hold the same play. But, yeah. uh, he probably wasn't deep enough. He, well, before he called, he had 1,300. No, he had 1,600. I apologize. He had 1,600 because that stack of green is 1,000. 300, so it would have been 1,300 for Rye Guy to call. And that would be a tough call, especially these, like, Gary is closer to, the, like, it's one of those spots where I call it he could have leveraged his image, where Gary doesn't really have a whole lot of bluffs here, and he could have leveraged his image to, I, I, Rye Guy is a good player where he would have, he, he's folding queen, queen high flush and under, for sure, king high flush, he can still fold there, but it, it would have been a lot tougher. Just call, yeah, yeah. He, it would have been a lot tougher for him to fold, for for Rye guy to fold there. But for all those flushes under a king high flush, I, I think Gary could have got the fold there. But it's a, I'm not pulling that trigger a lot. That's a tough spot. That's a, it's a tough spot to pull the trigger uh, on. When, but when you when you if you can recognize that the down bet is targeting a certain hand. That, that might be a good spot to try to pull that bluff off. If you, uh, but it's, sometimes that spot is hard to recognize for sure. PLO Even when you do, it's hard to pull the trigger. He sailed or cash app everybody in here. He, I know he lost 12000 in an hour. Real heavy set guy. But he went to Ryan three or four times. Then he went started going to other plate people. <laughs> The heavy set guy. Dude, I don't know how they zill so much. Trio okay. wakes up with aces. He will probably like open for a raise here. I could only do 500. Even though they're weak aces, they're weak aces, well, yeah, but he's he, oh, he's going for the. Okay, he's going to play it really soft. Probably, he probably won't even three bet here if it's raised up, unless he can get the money in. And this is where, like, Makes stacked sense. up awareness oh, is really important, too, right? Like, maybe who's in the straddle, who's in the blinds, what their stacked up is compared to yours. Yeah. Um, and or, that's A, right? And then B, how well are that is that person probably going to raise on, in their straddle or whatever? So certain hands you might want to be limping in, like what JL's doing, right? I, I, I actually do whip. I, I retract my statement. I actually probably would limp here. That actually is the prudent place. Again, position is everything. Yeah. So raising here, you're actually going to be check folding a lot. So if you can actually see the flop for cheap so for your for your for the weakest part of your range, uh, for weakest part of your ace ace range is not the weakest part of your range. It's, it's, uh, and it's both there, but for the weak part of your ace ace range, it actually also it gives you a little of this guy's ability when you do hit really strong. Interesting action here. Both of them work real hard though. The bottom card does pair, so JL does have two pair with the aces, but it's going to give Hazel uh, bottom vote here. Yeah. And JL knows this is a way ahead or way behind spot, so that's what, he's also trying to get a little bit of value for his hand. Nearly knock your shoes um, off. Should go check, check. Yep, check, check. Raise will take it down. Um, 
Yep, that's about pretty as standard, standard as you get. Yeah, yeah, pretty standard for most <laughs> players, I imagine. Yeah, pretty standard. Um, Basil, uh, if I was Basil, I'd probably lead more, though, on the turn there and not check call just for the stamp, just for the standpoint of if he did have a lot of, if he did have some strong acting, like straight draw, flush draw, you can get those hands to fold with a, with a strong bet, uh, on the turn. Oh, did he have, did he have a boat? He had the boat on the turn. Okay, well, it's either or. It's, it was still a weak boat, so there's still some hands you're trying to, uh, like, you still want, like, over pairs to fold there. Um, you know, so I still that? would be more inclined to just bet and, the bar. Uh, get the hand over with in that spot. Or bets, if you're trying to get value, do a down bet maybe, right under half pot, and uh, see if you get called by, by, uh, uh, by over pairs. Because you actually probably would get value from Aces if you down bet a little bit there. Obviously. So it would have been the same result, but you have more control over the hand. Uh, if you can fill this Oh, I thought y'all said he It's actually a. If Carter was in better position, this is definitely a hand I would be aggressive with. Ace 7 9 3. Yes. Yeah. Uh, double suited. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mike, uh, Mike doesn't really like, uh, doesn't respect short set much. So if he thinks he has any kind of equity, he knows he doesn't have a set of aces. He knows that because he was the initial razor pre-flop. So he's willing to get it in there and just and see where the cards go live. Because because of because he was the razor, and because of JL's stack depth, Close. there's pretty much no yeah, scenario where JL yeah, has, yeah. A has a set ace. Sure. <laughs> so that's also why he's willing to get in there. That hand that board is very connected. The only thing he's really worried about, which he blocked it before, that is four deuce. Four deuce is about the only oh, thing that has him. That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, hands. Uh, so yeah, he never has a set of aces. <laughs> it's hard for him to have. What you call two um, a strong, not strong. Yeah. Like in terms of, I mean, like the ace in the whatever the picture is, right? It's, it's typically a hand exactly what he has. Yeah. And this ace high flush draw with the seven. This is why I don't like playing short, hey, because if JL was deeper, Carter folds. Sure. It's the fact that it's the fact that he only he only had a thousand in the hand. That J, oh yeah, it's like twelve hundred in the, the hand. Where you take the missiles and, to dinner? And like I said, he knows he doesn't have aces here. Yeah, because it's, it's never it's never leading. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and him having what is, I don't know what what aces set of aces ever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, especially on a but, drawing board like that. Because yeah. of how the action he's like he's yeah. removing yeah. set aces and putting on yeah. ace high flush. Yeah, because because JL is out of position, and Carter was the initial raiser. JL just doesn't. He, he, it's hard for him to have four deuce there. Most people aren't. Call, like, JL's a, a pretty knowledgeable player. He, he's capable of having four deuce there, but the odds of him having four deuce there is pretty slim, especially based on the pre-fall action. Exactly. Okay. And so, uh, again, Carter knowing this was like, ah, I'll get him with a, I'll get him with a combo draw. It's like it's only twelve hundred. So. Uh, if I'm wrong, I only lose twelve hundred. It, it, it worked out from there. So nice, yeah. nice play there from uh, from Mike. Yeah, yeah, that's Mike a there. yeah. That's what I, said. I, lo I love Mike's game. Uh, his his feel for the game is I, I think second to none. He has a great feel for the game. JL uh, will reload. It looks like. Um, unfortunately, I did get word that for hand nineteen and twenty, uh, we had some uh, mess up with our. Uh, scanners. So, Jimmy opened um, up a little bit, huh? I think we'll run a few ads here. Uh, maybe hop back after this hand, but uh, we'll go ahead and take a break here um, to let the scanner come back and make it work again. Your adrenaline is pumping. Over $20,000 is on the line. The clock is ticking. Buzzer beater bad beat has begun. Famous Texas card house bad beat is back. Take your shot to win big. Be in any Texas card house when it hits and you get your share. $100 cash in your hand. The bad beat jackpot rises every day and the qualifying hand gets easier and easier each day. Just by being checked in, you're a winner of $100, no matter which Texas card house you're in. Texas Card House is the only poker club in the state offering you this. Come into Texas Card House all spring to win. Looks like we're on hand 20 now. Um, we'll see if the. I think they had to take a moment to reset the scanner. Um, I guess we'll, we'll fill this time with a few. Uh, I guess it's like a little Q and A portion here. So if anyone in the chat has any questions regarding you know PLO or card room here. 
Go ahead and ask them in the live stream chat. Alfred and I will do our best to answer them. Um, and for anyone in the live stream chat that would love to play on our live stream, uh, you can contact Mallory, our game runner for TCH Live Dallas. You can contact her at that phone number or that email uh, to inquire about openings for our Tuesday or Wednesday streams. Obviously, uh, there's high demand for our live stream games, uh, but you can definitely ask Mallory to see if there's any availability on a specific date. And of course, we do have our Bad Beats promo back here at TCH. It is a uh, statewide Bad Beat that is um, currently at a steel wheel right now. It needs to be beat. Five high straight flush uh, at $27,000 plus the $100 multi club share bonus. So if you're playing in any of our TCH locations across the state of Texas, when this Bad Beat gets hit, you get 300 bucks. And I've actually done it twice. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I got 50 bucks because I'm an employee, but... Um, yeah, I got 51. Yeah, I, I, I remember playing, and, um, you know, you, I saw Nick there walking around with his, you know, stack of $100 bills, and, like, one of the players at my table was like, you know, I bet you've just walked away, because he was just, like, putting it on the seats, where he ever saw a swiped in player. He's like, oh, I bet if you just walk away, he won't even notice. And I was like, no, no, I feel bad. So. Did, didn't our smallest room win this one last? Wow. Yeah, yeah, the, the RGB location. Uh, it's a bad beat. So truly, any we had 26 tables going that night. So truly, any room Any can room, win. exactly. I mean, it's just a matter of um, pure luck, honestly. Good. And if you happen to be swiped in any of our locations, you get 300 bucks. Can't beat that. You didn't even do anything, you got 100. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't. You know, I mean, and uh, you got to keep in mind too. This this bad beat does go up a thousand dollars every single day, uh, but also the hand raking uh, goes down too. So today's the last day for a straight flush. Tomorrow will go up to twenty eight thousand dollars, and then it'll be quad aces losing. Um, but it, at that point, the quad aces do need to still lose to a straight flush. Uh, whenever the hand ranking goes down, it needs to be beat by the ranking above. So all the way down the quad deuces, it still needs to be be, be, be beat by straight flush. Once it goes to aces full of kings, that's when quads can be beat by quads. And that's when it's like, that's usually when it hits around forty-five or fifty thousand dollars. And that's when, okay, this is when I start coming to the play. I think most cases it's hit. I think the most times it's hit aces versus kings. Right, right at that threshold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's go back in the action here. I think we're ready to get back in. Let's see if the... Ooh, Gary, what a nice spot. <laughs> Way to go, Gary. Yeah, I really appreciate everyone being patient with us. Um, having a few issues with our scanners here on our table. If for anyone in the live stream chat does yet to check out ECH Dallas, which is still boggles my mind. I mean, the, the number of people I talk to here that are brand new members is like, oh, I don't even, like, when did y'all, like, I'll be dealing or playing and I find a new player because I can tell based on their player card number, right? And it, it, it's kind of a bad thing, I guess, that, that we're calling them out. But anytime I see someone swipe in, I'm like, I see it's like 28,000. I'm like, oh, is this your first time here? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, how long have y'all been open? And I say, two years. And then they're like, what? <laughs> I had a player like that. It's like, I live, I live like three blocks down the road. How long have y'all been open? Two I don't know, over two yeah, years. Yeah, no, <laughs> they're it, like, what? It, it blows my mind that like, people that enjoy the game of poker so much uh, just don't know about this room. So like, that's why every stream will come on. So I'm like, if anyone's new, I mean, and you've yet to check out TCH Dallas, we're located very centrally. Um, at 635 and 35 in the Sam Moon Center. Uh, and very soon we'll be opening up a second club here in the DFW area. So uh, really, a what a time we're living in, right? To have such great poker rooms in, you know, locally. I mean, obviously you run for the days. I remember the days having the chance to drive to Oklahoma every, every week to go play. Or playing home games and tie with ridiculous rate, right? Like that, that, that was our life for like multiple, multiple years. Yeah. Ace queen and three. I don't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> I do not. Because I, I, the only form of gambling I like to do is poker. I'm so, the same way. Yeah. Like going up to the casino to, to, to just to play poker it was very. You got to uh, walk through the smoke. Yeah. It smells. And then, if you, then if you're <laughs> a loser that there. night, that, that hour drive home, drive home yeah. was like. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 
Oh, well, and no, nothing's worse too, phones, right? Where you like you. Got two phones and the Range Rover. Yeah. All right, let's, let's see. Wow, some pretty hands here. Yeah, we got some nice hands here. Uh, yeah, Best to get them in the cage because we got the only one with the play. club draw is Rye Guy has top pair. Gary currently Becca has the straight the upgrade. Oh, excuse me, Becca does have the nut straight. Yep, yeah, that's gonna be a bend fold, like, like just like that. But she did that. Pri she did that right. Don't slow play. <laughs> don't, uh, don't give. Don't give free cards. There's, like, just because you feel like it, like in hold. Uh, you see a lot of hold players make that. Back when they first get a I know, yellow, on, you feel like you got the forward locked up. Like, oh, yeah, I just got to dodge the fourth draw. But you're, you're dodging. Off. Honestly, in a multi-way spot, you're dodging a six. Well, you have the nine upgrade, but usually you just say you have the straight. You're dodging a six, a seven, the board pair, clubs. It it's like you really want to get people, just, as many people out as you can uh, in a multi-way spot. There. She played that uh, She played that pretty standard. That's that's what you want to do. And then how about the discipline there from Raga? <laughs> just the snap to the clean high flush draw there. And I, I think that's pretty common, right, in PLO. Uh, obviously, players playing the two-card game, I mean, any flush draw you're probably calling, but in PLO, when you're not drawing to a nutted flush draw, it's just so much harder to navigate. It depends on the player. Rye Guy is a very knowledgeable player, but you'll still see a, a good population of the PLO community feel. Uh, at least once. Yeah, uh, uh, at least once, especially if, uh, especially if they're putting Becca on what she has. Uh, a straight, they're like, oh, there's a good chance my flush draw is good. So, uh, Rye Guy did that right. You're supposed to just like just let it go. There's better spots. Um, but and out of position. Too. Yeah, like, exactly. If you do hit your club, are you even getting it paid? Probably not. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, versus a player like Becca, no. Uh, uh, she probably checked folds. Um, so, yeah. Let's see here. Carter does have a pretty hand here. Unfortunately, doesn't connect. Uh, best hand currently is JP's with the top pair. And backdoor. Wait, how does it? Okay. Yeah, I would actually <laughs> like to see JP come in for a bet here. Yes. yes. Uh, how are you? Even though there's a straight possibility out there, he blocks that. And it's a good, uh, it's honestly a good bet fold spot where he can bet if he gets if he gets raised there. He can comfortably he fold knowing comfortably that fold. he's probably not getting enough outs to even test his boat. Exactly. So it's one of those things where you still want to charge draws. And um, it's one of those way ahead or way behind spots. So it's definitely a spot that yeah, I definitely I like how he played that. You want to go ahead and just take, take control. We have a new player here in the four seat. Um, the name hasn't appeared just yet. Uh, this is the player you recognize. Um, yeah, um, I don't. I haven't played with him a lot. Um, I think his name is. You know, it starts with a B. I don't want to say it's Brian. Ben. I think he's checking audio. Yeah. Um, he's a very aggressive player. So like when I was talking about with these rooms are very conducive to aggressive players. He is very aggressive. He makes very <laughs> unconventional uh, bluffs. Um, yeah, I, I like his game, that's, but it's, it's a game I, I, I don't have the, the gumption to, uh, <laughs> to try myself. Um, but he is willing to bluff in spots that are that's, yeah. that I'd say 98% of people just don't even, gonna even think about, let alone try. So would you say like there's more sub gap categories of strategies in Kilo versus uh, no limit holding, right? Like because in no limit holding you have the you know tag, tight aggressive, the lag, loose aggressive. Versa. Um, so as you start getting, as the skill, as people's skill goes up, yes, um, you start seeing a lot of different things. Um, but your average player is going to be um, is going to be one of your average player um, is usually going to be one of two things: loose passive. There's not even really a tight passive in this game, honestly. <laughs> uh, tight passive really doesn't exist. All right. Peel, if, if it does, right. but yeah. now we're working on you'll never, now like, we're those players. Really, you, a tight passive player is, doesn't really make money. They don't want to. So you see the much more, they get they, they get bored out of this game. Bored out of their mind. I got rid of the last one. They'll be back back to hold them. But so usually loose passive or loose or or loose aggressive. That's usually the average player in this game. Days before. <laughs> before they find you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you don't really like. Um, uh, I would classify the but with good with players with more skill. You see tight aggressive, loose aggressive. Uh, there's some skilled players that can play 
that, that can switch it up to tight passive, loose aggressive, loose tight aggressive. Like they, they have, they're very good at, uh, at switching gears. Um, to, it's hard to put them on, on ranges. So you see, you definitely see more styles uh, when, when, the, when people start understanding the game more. So, yeah. oh, one of your favorite comments about bingo here from Boris. PLO is just bingo. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I came on here. I'm, I'm trying to explain their, their thought process, uh, especially some of these players. More to it than just the meets the eye. Exactly. And um, as they start getting deeper, um, I promise you it's, it's a lot less just, oh, just get it in pre-flop and see what happens. It's, it, there's a lot of... There's a lot of strategy, a lot of thought. Yeah, there's like an asterisk with that statement. Right? Exactly. Like, if you're shallow, sure, yeah, you can call PLO Bingo if you want. But once it's like uh, probably 200, 300 big blinds plus, then you're looking at, okay, yeah. this is there's some serious strategy yeah. here. And because it, PLO solvers don't translate to live, uh, live play, um, you don't... The game's not solved, especially yeah. live. So, it, like you get, that's why you get to see as people get start to understand the game more, you see more strategies because there's no, there is no real GTO. There's no such thing as GTO. Stone Tilt Boys. Game Theory Alpha. For people that don't know what GTO means, there is no GTO in PLO. So it gives you, it, you can really use your mind and formulate how you wanted to play the game as you start to learn the game. I really like that aspect. So it looks like Dustin here will pot it here with the King Jack 9-7 double suited. Going to get called by Faisal with just the Ace 9-7-3 triple suit. <laughs> I actually don't I don't mind this. It's a Again, it's a little loose, but if he, if he can gain position, um, it makes a lot of sense. Which it looks but like he did. He did, but it's so many people will flop top two pair but pretty dicey flop uh, a lot of combo draws available he's doing what he's supposed to do at this stack the pot ratio hitting top two pair even with it being a dynamic fork you just get it in and you pray <laughs> but Faisal's driving the action you're gonna pop the flop with the nut flush draw and a gut shot you're gonna get called by Ben oh my goodness I mean what do you do here with your Dustin what do you do if you're Dustin? Well, Dustin, with the top Dustin two knows he's ahead of Ben. Um, now he's just trying to determine what Faisal has. Uh, yeah, Obviously, blocking top yeah, two pair, Faisal, blocking top set, blocking middle set. Yeah, Fa so Dustin's doing. Yeah, he's raising. He will re jam, and then now Ben here in a spot. Yeah, he knows he's ahead of Ben with that just call. He knows Ben is on a draw. And um, Faisal play, actually played his hand the way he's supposed to. Um, he has enough equity. <laughs> what? We got a three-way all-in here. Probably going to be a 10K pot. He has a he has what you call a sucker wrap. That all his outs are nuts. He's not in a – he percentage why he, he is, but, he, like, there's so many hands that dominate a hand like this, especially with the clubs being on deck. Faisal has the flush draw cover. Dustin has blockers to his straight, and he's in a really bad spot. <laughs> This is sad. <laughs> very unconventional call. He probably was looking Does at the... Does the 10 give anyone the better straight, or everyone has 9-7? I don't have 2,000. Uh, no, uh, the 10, yeah. Well, Ben get, Ben has a no, he has a sucker wrap, so he, a 10 does give him a straight. He can hit a 7, 9, 10, or a queen. That's not a club. And there it is. He, uh, oh, my gosh. Ben, ben is going to scoop. Yeah. Um, With the 9, 10. That's where... Uh, see, when, he, when, when that... Uh, when that um, viewer commented, bingo... That was a bingo spot. <laughs> that was. You're really not supposed to call there. <laughs> In that spot, he uh, he thinks he's getting enough equity, but there's just so many hands that have him drawing so thin that he probably it would have been the better better play. In the pool. But when, play, when when viewers see hands like that, they're like, "Yep, bingo." <laughs> So I definitely understand, but Dustin loves his spot there. Like I, I promise you, Dustin, Dustin and even Faisal, that's a profitable spot for them. They're winning more money there in the long run than yeah, they're Ben is losing it in the long run. It was a brick run. turn, yeah. just unfortunate right there. Yeah. 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 Unbelievable there. Almost a 10K pot headed oh, towards Ben. Easy. Just sat down. <laughs> The Dustin's seat's not even warm yet, and he's up 5K. I bet Dustin's going to buy it for at least 5K. But, like, the, the game is about to start getting real deep. Six, eight, five. Uh, yeah, we're only an hour into the stream here. We could see, I mean, we could see 10, 15K stacks here by the end of the night. Yes. Easily. Yeah. If, if 
if they would have been deeper, I think Ben folds. I think Ben just decided that there was just too much dead money in the pot that uh, he just couldn't. He just like, oh, I was just hoping Club doesn't come. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I need the offsuit queen, please. He, he, he knows he's drawing yeah. to a straight with, with no club. He knows between know those two guys, the clubs are, are lost. Yeah. Unbelievable there. Yeah. Um, and just like that, I mean, Dustin was one of our big winners. Down the most now, down 3,700. Reloading for 10K. 10K. Well, I knew there we be, go. I knew it'd be at least 5K, so yeah, 10K makes a lot of sense. Let's go, okay. Dustin's kind of, Dustin, even more than me, Dustin likes playing. He, he's, he's a very good player. He's going to make less mistakes than you. He's trying to play as, he's trying to, his, his role's deeper than mine, so he's trying to play deep as possible. Uh, he's, uh, he's a very good player. He'll, 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 he won't go, this won't make him go until he's, uh, he's a very smart player. 10,000 worth. 10,000 worth. But yeah, that was, uh, that was unfortunate for, uh, for, for that. <laughs> Oh, this is pretty. Dustin has a pretty strong head here. Head here, if he can get it heads up with a six, five, four, double suited. Uh, that's that's one of those hands that you're trying to get heads up. Uh, a little repot the action yeah. here. A pot from JL. A repot. JP gonna fold. Becca gonna fold. JL might call here. Ben uh, still hasn't even racked up his chips yet. Uh, ben. Uh, ben might call. Ben might call. Honestly. <laughs> um, he might call just because he won that pot. He might. He, if, if they were on stream, he might have called blind. <laughs> Hayden Fortini in the chat says, what's up, y'all? Love to see some PLO. Who is in the booth? You got Derek and Alfred in the booth, Hayden. Glad to see you in the chat. Ooh, not, not the best flop for Dustin. It's actually pretty locked. Uh, ben might peel if when JL bet. Oh, JL checks. Oh, he's blocking. Oh, he has too much of the board locked up. See, he has the, he has the, um, he has a, I would actually would have preferred a bet there on the flop. Uh, but now, now it's just, it's going to be really hard for him to get action here. Um, he just covers too much. He's really, he's really only trying to get uh, uh, action from a king high straight to a set. Um, so that's, uh, once the jack comes, it's pretty locked. It's one of those hands where he, I've, I would have liked to see a bet on the flop just fold. because his equity is so strong. From uh, JL. JL, and you JL. can get called by weaker holdings. Weaker sure, holdings, yeah. weaker draws. Uh, uh, even if you're going against a hot, hard hand, so top, like that's one of those spots where uh, you're not that bad. You're not you're not drawing that bad first top set. Sure. Um, Tell like, the group, hey, watch it's one of those spots where. And depending 17. on their stack size, <laughs> you know, <laughs> still really get it in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Bad journey. You're bad journey. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I can't tell how JL has right now, but it looks like he has close to three. He probably wouldn't get I it think in there. He reloaded for 2,500. 25? Yeah. Okay. He probably doesn't get it in there uh, unless he can get unless it, unless it's just uh, he knows he just wants to realize his old equity. Um, but it's also one of those spots where you might peel just to see if the board doesn't pair because usually in that spot uh, someone might have a set and just don't want to get it there. I had a card full without a set. I would have liked to see. Yeah, I, I personally, uh, I would have bet just to either take it down with an ace high or um, realize my equity with uh, some money in the pot. Best card in my hand. Ben looks like really driving the action here, trying to be involved as many pots as possible, yes, even out of position here. He's 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 loose aggressive. He's he's passing. Uh, he's loose passive, loose aggressive. He likes to see a lot of flops. His 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 post flop reading skill is pretty strong. Um, so um, this is an action yeah. flop here, set over set, and the nut flush draw for Ben. We could see oh. some money put in here, pile in here. Yes. Gonna be an interesting spot. So looks like I mean, but Gary, I've seen Gary make some very solid folds as well when I yeah. deal. You know, he he knows his hand's very strong here, but he also knows his hand's also very susceptible too. Yeah. Be well, because the see, see how the board is not very connected. It's king six deuce. So if JL raises here, which he is, it's weighted towards another set. Towards a set, he's not gonna be doing this with an ace high flush draw too often. Um, well, you can just close the action. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If he was, it's one of those spots where it's just like it's. He has a lot of set of kings here. He's not doing this with a set of deuces. Um. But, oh no, he's gonna get it in. Oh. Looks like he will make the call, uh, leaving himself with twenty three hundred back. 
Ben here, still drawn to the nuts. It's going to make the call, too. So we're, we're going to go three ways to a turn okay. card here. A really big turn. So here's the sick part. If it gets in three way on the flop, Ben actually is equity. Is oh, my gosh. Perfect. And ben, ben picks up equity on the turn. Ben's going to win. <laughs> the the offsuit 10 going to come. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh. All in for 1700 and if Gary folds, Ben might make the call. I don't, I don't see Gary folding. <laughs> Ben's going to call no matter what, I promise you. Um, because 1700 he's getting over 3 to He's getting right at 3-1 to one on his money. Right um, now. I mean, this is before Gary puts before in the money, Gary so calls. he's going to get 4-1 to one he's, if Gary, Gary calls. At this point, it would be just wrong for Ben to fold. Uh, but he shouldn't have been here in the first place, but now that he's here, uh, he has to call. It, it, would, it would be... He, he'd be malpractice at this point for it. Gary um, really put in the blender here. I really Only losing to yeah. top set reasonably, right? You don't yeah. you don't see hands like pocket jacks I, raising I, the flop like that. So. I, I'm I, I'm trying to figure out what Gary was was what, what his Great plan fold. was. Great because uh, he if he's gonna fold there, he should have folded the flop. Um, it's one of those. It's like that's a bargain. If, <laughs> you're not really. There's no other current card but a six you're looking for. Right? Exactly. Yeah. JL's and never, never diamonds. Yeah. JL is never slowing down. Once he, once he pots it there on the on the flop. He's See never. River card brings. It was the diamond. Oh my god! What I say? I told you Ben would win. I said Ben is gonna. Like there's this. Oh my gosh! Ben wins another massive pot here. A 7k pot headed towards Ben. Oh man! You see this? Ben. You see this in PLO too, where like oh my no matter gosh. what someone does, they, they just, just get there. They run like God. Like it's not even just the off the non pairing yeah. diamond on the river. Yeah. I, I, I no jack of diamonds, no deuce of diamonds. When I saw the that jack pairing diamonds, when I saw that jack on the turn, I was like, Ben is gonna win this. <laughs> and because Gary made that. Because Gary was in there, it actually made... It gave him better odds. Well, it gave him... Yeah. He, at that point, he's getting the perfect match. He had 25%. <laughs> when you have a flush draw on the flop, you are you cannot be more than a 3-1 uh, uh, a to one dog. Sure. And he, you he, have at least 25%. Exactly. And it's, if you're drawing With, the nuts. Exactly. Yeah. And when Gary calls there, at this point, Dustin's he like, has oh, yeah, to call. Been here. So I take that back by he, I would have been there it's if I would actually slow down and thought well, about I mean, it. I Once Gary calls, you have so to admit, right? that's what, Actually, Ben was hoping that Gary calls. It's a mandatory right? call yeah. at that point. Like, it, like you, you, you're in a break-even spot there to where, yeah. So like, say say on the flop, it went bet from JL, and then Gary re – or it went bet – or it went bet from Gary on the flop, and say JL – Repops and then Gary repops, then Ben would probably fold. No, the, the math is still the same. Oh, like, it's still the same, right? Yeah, because the, they're all the, all the money's the, <laughs> it, it, It's one of those. It's one of those. What is your What is your risk tolerance? Sure. Like, Jimmy, like I'm not yes. one of those proponents that says this is correct. This is incorrect. What is your risk tolerance? Do you want to introduce this variance into your life? Like, you're not wrong if you call. You're you're. It's a profitable play if you get it in here, three way, and. But if you just but don't want the but variance. But 75 percent of the time, you're going to be losing 6K. Exactly. <laughs> or whatever. And in PLO, you're just seeing less hands. So you're not – it's hard to realize that equity, <laughs> equity over the long run. Um, or to recoup well, such a big like loss. Exactly. Especially yeah. in a session, especially in a session like, like this. Like, Five five makes almost every day, yeah, but that's 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 not true. every day. Yeah. So it's harder to so at these I limits. It's harder to the realize your equity that. for the same oh, amount of money man. you lost. I'm anxious. So I, I wouldn't have mind if Ben would have folded there uh, for the money if they were going to get it in. Oh wow, action flop here. Oh, they, I think they got. I was just nervous. Oh, you check check. That guy gonna flop trip ten. He's gonna turn top boat. Rod guy with the open ender. Yeah, Becca. Becca was the three better pre flop. That was pretty standard for Rye guy. Yeah, because Becca a three bet pre flop, so on a on a paired board that he doesn't pair, um, he's he's probably just check folding. Man, and look at that, Ben, awesome. the Out big winner. And I think I think JL is done for the night. Oh no, he's coming back. Okay, JL looks like he's just gonna get some reload chips. Maybe take a walk after that beat. Yeah. Uh, ben, the big winner right now, up nine k, has a thirteen k stack. Five hands in. You saw the guys five. Welcome to PLO. The great game of PLO. <laughs> great game of pot limit Omaha. Yeah. You can make it, you Golly. Make Man, this is making me want to play PLO, but I don't I don't think I have the role for this. <laughs> 100 JP. Make, make it 110 JP. You'd be very surprised. So 125. All you on can. My um, <laughs> I get mad. If, so if, you're uh, <laughs> if you're 125, you have the role. I know you have the role. You can play 125 PLO. 
uh, buy it for 500 or 1,000 uh, and be just fine. I, 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 you, you, you know, you have a basic knowledge of PLO, which, in my opinion, the PLO is 20 years <laughs> ago what Hold'em was. Okay. Yeah. Well, is what Hold'em was 20 years ago. Interesting. So if you have a basic oh, knowledge of this game, Are you, sure yeah. you're not Asian? Uh, you can be a, a break-even to slightly winning player if you have the discipline, which I know you do, to apply that basic knowledge. Um, and that's the key. Because, <laughs> because of the nature of this game, discipline is even more paramount in a game like this because you see people like Ben gambling it up. And they're up 10 k <laughs> in two hands. Yeah, yeah, and then when you try it, you lose three buy-ins. You're like, oh, God, what the? It's like, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I get it. That's why discipline is so important in a game like this, uh, especially when starting off. But if you can acquire a basic knowledge of this game, you can, you can, yeah, you, you can, you can hold really, your own. I've been, I've been wanting to just because I've seen how popular the games are getting. Right? I, 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 I come here on a Tuesday morning. I see five PLO games. I'm like, what is going on here? Houston and, will eventually be. Uh, Dallas will eventually be like Houston. I call Houston the mecca of the PLO world. Not because they they get huge games, but not because they necessarily get huge games, but because that city has the most PLO than any other city in the world. Look at this here from Dustin, pushing the action with the Ace-King 7-4. Just piling the money here. Using that 4, imagine, as a blocker here and having that nut flush as, you know. That's exactly what he's As he's doing. a uh, kind of a backup. Yeah, it's, and it's one of those spots. Uh, it's, it's one of those spots where I think he, he just figures there's enough dead money in there to where it's like it's, it's worth oh, nice. the gamble here. Something a one time, and there's the club. Bink. Bink City for Dustin. Uh-huh. Basil thought he got there, but no, the nut flush for Dustin. Basil, Basil was, uh, I think he knew he was head. At this point, when the money gets in, he either thinks he, he might have thought he had four or five, so yeah, he might have thought he got there. Nope. But um, <laughs> for Basil, that was one of those either he's way ahead and doesn't want the clubs, or he was way behind and he needs the clubs. And he needs the clubs. Yeah. yeah. He might have thought he got there. Basil, yeah, like he, that was just a run bad spot. He actually <laughs> he played it correctly. Yes. Right? Yeah, which, <laughs> that was just a run bad spot for for Basil. Uh, but that's also uh, what helps Dustin's image uh, is he he'll he'll gamble it up sometimes. But like I said, he's a very knowledgeable player. But he'll gamble with you sometimes just to uh, just to give you some action. And that's what he was doing. He was he was he was giving Basil action because he knows Basil will give it back. Um, and that's kind of just like the standard paramount rule, right? Exactly. You, you want to give the action to the players that think would give the same action back to you. Exactly. The last thing you want to do is give the action to the person that is playing 10% of pip. Yeah. And I don't think in this lineup you'll have anybody that is. True, true, like, true. This everyone, is like, this is a good lineup. Yeah. Everyone has everyone has a pretty good knowledge of PLO, so they they, they play they, they, they play a wider range than, than I would say most. So they, they, they're not afraid to play some wider range. This is a, this is a good lineup. Mallory Poker in the chat, our game runner and uh, li lineup. Oh, wow. Uh, says she pushed a 30K pot and won 2 PLO last week. Wow. Yeah, I, I've done that before. <laughs> That was the week I took to, off, so I wasn't here. <laughs> to, to date, my biggest my tip phone. and biggest pot has is all in PL, one two PLO. Yeah, that was a uh, Kim. For Kim, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was there. I, I was like, I was on the side. And I was it's like, what's I was on? actually standing next to Dustin, and I was like, they were doing a side bet of who was gonna win. I was like, whoever has Kim is gonna win this. <laughs> I remember hearing that actually when I was sitting in the box. She yeah. had been sun running so hard that last month, and I was just like. In these spots, I'm like whoever, I'm like whoever put their money on Kim is winning this, 100. percent And sure enough, Kim won. I was like, that, that was a that was an amazing win for her. That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, I was just sweating there. I didn't want to mess up. Oh, <laughs> no, you did. Was like, you did. I had, like, I had like five side pots. You did a there was great like, job. There were uh, so many people all in. You did a you did a really good I job. That. Uh, one of the reasons why I think Kim gave you Kim gave you a good tip was yeah, because yeah. she's actually a former dealer herself. Yeah. And I think she appreciates. Yeah, it. And, and that's well, obviously, other than winning the pot, I talked to her on the side. I yeah. played with her a couple of days after that, and he's, he, he actually, she actually complimented you and said he did a he did a really good job oh, in that too. spot. That was a because that's one that's one of those real complicated spots where you have four or five side pots and you have to keep track and of who's in who. You cannot mess up because exactly. it, it is such, a lot of there's money. so much money. It, yeah, I think the the thing people forget about right when. Um, 
these people that don't deal, as as dealers, you're handling other people's money. So like that's the last thing you want to do is mess up in a spot like that yeah. where there's tens of thousands of dollars in the line. Yeah. So it's, uh, I, mean, I, I don't ever think I hear that that often. People say dealers need a job, but for the, for the few people that might say that, it it it, it is and it isn't at yeah. the same time, right? Especially it, it, in PLO in, in Hold'em, you can kind of go on autopilot sure. for the most part because it's heads up, um, hands are pretty easy to read. There's not usually there's usually not a side pot. If there is, there's just one. There is a big hand developer here. It looks like yeah. aces with the nut redraw. Um, ben with top two pair and JL with middle set. My goodness. If, it's one of those weird. So if Ben JP raised, has some equity too. Uh, JL did not. Raise. Did he? Yeah, he, he did. did so raise. if he, so Becca, she's she's gonna get away from this. Uh, that actually gives her an out. She 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 won't be getting it in here. JP will live really, and that's actually what we were just talking about earlier, right? Where you're trying to get people to fold their equity. Mm -hmm. As we saw there, JP had 38% equity. That just, he just instantly mucked, right? Oh, yeah. What was it? That you remember what his hand was? Uh, 9983 uh, single suit to the club. Okay. So the reason he let go of that hand, because he doesn't know the equities, there's just a lot of hands that have him crushed. Um, sure. So like a queen. His only a nut out is a seven. Yeah. Because a queen isn't a queen. Yeah. yeah. Ace king uh, yeah. gets there. Exactly. So if, if, if he hits a seven, he's he's sunk. Oh, he's set a, seven set of nines isn't probably queen. Yeah. Set of nines straightens the board out. Yeah, straightens the board out. So it's one of those spots where it, it hold them. It's much easier to realize your equity because like I have an open ender. The odds of somebody uh, even necessarily blocking me heads up is is very very slim. Let alone someone having a better draw than me. So it's uh, it's one of those spots where, like in PLO, for a player like JP who knows what he's doing, it's an easy fold. Yeah, but you don't know my back. And this is the why. This is why when you have your hand, just bet it. Uh, get, don't let people play perfectly against you. Where are we hung up? Yeah. Do not let them. <laughs> Dustin Dust stuck. Uh, ben, because <laughs> the, ben, ben, ben makes a great fold. fold. Two pair? Wow. Um, three pair with a five I don't set? know if I would have folded what? that. Yeah, um, just because. I think he had a three as well. Yeah, pretty which is pretty Wait, sick. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't <laughs> know, know if I would have folded that. Uh, like, just because <laughs> that board is so coordinated. He's <laughs> not blocking saying? ace, king, queen. I want queen. your money, not JL's money. Uh, king, queen, nine. <laughs> Those are hands JL was probably doing the same thing with. <laughs> and because JL is not very deep. Uh, in this really spot, it would have been the wrong move to get it in there, but I think I might just because of really? just because of how shallow Gale was, I yeah. might have so just uh, <laughs> so uh, I might have just got it in there. It was so. coming. Uh, but I mean, impressive fold. Oh he yeah, was, he was way behind. <laughs> that <laughs> was drawing to the jack there. That's a, a better better fold, than, better play than I would have made. <laughs> I would have been like, ooh. I'm going to a yeah. two-outer. <laughs> I'm wondering if, say there was some kind of flush draw on the board, do you think he'd be more willing to put the money in with the jack? More, more draws, so yeah. So, like, uh, the only thing he, like, any, so best case scenario is he's probably against ace, king, queen, king, queen, nine. Sure. Which means it's still a, a, wrap. a it's still, it's still, still sick, coin yeah. Play. yeah. <laughs> and worst case scenario is he has a set of jacks and tens, and now he's going really to two out already dead. Um, so it, it was the it was the right fold to make. Mark Wee in the chat. How's it going, Mark? <laughs> Julian says JP had nine nine eight seven. Okay, excuse nine, me. It's still still though. Still yeah, that's yeah. still a, a hand you really in a multi way spot. If it was if the hand started heads up. I'd be more inclined for him just to, yeah, no, to see no, the peel, but in, in a four-way pot, um, it's just too easy for someone to to um, uh, have a better draw than you. So, so it looks like Ben's hand currently the best hand at showdown, but JL with the mountain of equity here. Uh, Dustin with the double blocker to the nut straight though, so this is definitely a tough spot for Ben and JL. As you can't really be, you really can't be that comfortable. With JL drawing to an eight, knowing that Queen Jack already has you crushed you, and he will let it go there. And that's, that's a great um, blocker bet. Yeah, yep. great use of the blockers there from Dustin. It, and it's one of those things where he blockers can, are more relevant in PLO too. Yes, especially with him having position, so it, it allows him to play this spot perfectly. So he can, he, as long as the nuts don't change, and even if he gets called there, he can still just he keep just pop the turn. He, yeah. he can just keep betting. 
uh, especially especially if he's against a deeper player. Um, if he's against a sh shallow stack, he probably stops. But I guess uh, if he's up against Ben, he's, he, uh, he probably just keeps... plenty of full equity. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but against, uh, it looks like uh, it looks like JP I has maybe like two thousand twenty five hundred like that. Against him, he might have stopped. But uh, against yeah, Ben, he's gonna just keep going until the match change. So about an hour and a half in our stream now. Uh, welcome to TCH Live. You're just now joining us. We're live from Dallas, Texas, streaming 5-5 five five Straddle PLO tonight. It's a four-card game, for those of you that don't know. And you must use two cards from your hand, three from the board. Uh, so, for example, if you don't know about this, um, uh, I guess kind of caveat to the game, say you have the Ace of Diamonds with no other diamond in your hand, and there's four diamonds aboard, you do not have a flush, which is probably one of the more common mistakes people make in this game when they're just now playing. But you do have to use two from your hand, three from the board, uh, and you have to bet, you can only bet the pot limit, which is a pot, a pot size bet. Ooh, Dale has a rare high card run now, King Queen Jack 10. And it's only one suit. No, <laughs> that's very rare, right? Yeah, it's, it's having all the Broadway cards except for the ace. So he has two of the three qualifiers. You, 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 you worry about high cards, connectiveness, and then suit. So even with the, connectivity, as yeah, I've heard, uh, exactly. Jane and does say that before. So this is, yeah, so he completely lifts the board, but he shouldn't lose a lot of money in this spot. But he, that's one of those hands where if he can hit, if that's a, if that, if that eight is a nine. Uh, he can still possibly continue if he's in position. Um, just right. because Call, calling the flop to hit a draw on the turn. <laughs> well, if, so say it's a nine and those diamonds are hearts. There's a lot of turn cards that gonna give him a lot of any equity. any Broadway any yeah. uh, any not, any seven and yeah. eight. Yeah. If, he, if the board was disconnected and was like say like nine nine five deuce uh, with two hearts on board, I wouldn't even hate a bet on the flop there. Um, uh, oh, the nuts here for Ben with the with the king high redraw. Oh wow! Dustin just has the pair of sevens with the eight or pair of eights with the eight high flush draws. So I'd he's gonna he has a gut shot too. Or he, he has a gut shot too to the nine to the ten high straight. He's he's gonna definitely continue here, I think. But because he has position here, he's gonna want to see hey, another card. Uh, but it is a pot size bet. There's, there, you got to remember they're, they're, how deep they are. Oh, uh, yep, they're still pretty. Oh, wow, he bet 3K. Yeah, there's a oh, pot okay. size bet on the turn here. Okay. So I imagine wow. Dustin's going to fold. Oh, yeah, he's going to fold. Yeah. Say, I, didn't, I, mean, I didn't realize it was a pot size bet. Say yeah. that seven of diamonds was an ace of diamonds, then, then maybe, right? Well, maybe. Even, <laughs> no. even then, you're still not getting the right price. I don't no, know. Uh, ace of, yeah, that, that does affect his decision, but even with the ace of diamonds, Ben uh, is actually blocking his key. But well, even if he had the ace of diamonds, with him potting there, he's just not getting enough equity to a pot size. Um, unless, unless you're fairly sure you're going to get value on the river. You have to be pretty sure that you're going to get value on the river to make that call. Because yeah, yeah, just based off of pure pot odds, it's not, it, it's just not getting enough equity to, uh, to a pot size bet. Even, even if it was a, let's say, a, even if it was an open ender, uh, open ender or flush draw, it's pretty close. But a gut shot flush draw, yeah, even if it was a nut flush draw, it's uh, not quite. All right, okay, Dustin definitely has a playable hand here. I haven't really heard much from Raga here in a little bit. We'll come in here with the ace, 10, 7, 6. I disagree, guys. Suited to the ace, so he definitely wants to see a multi-way flop here. See, I think we've seen every Broadway card available in the first five hands here. Don't think an ace is coming on the board, guys. More aces in there. Or a jack or a queen. That's uh, why my money's on Ben. Ben, he's on Ben, yeah. He's going to flop quads here. I was, I was like, who has, who has all the low cards? Yeah. Ben and, it's going to be a battle between Ben and JL here. Oh! Oh, my God. <laughs> Flops the set. Yeah, Ben is probably going to... It's probably going to be a Ben so check. Uh, I, 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 I see the check. It's the board's coordinated. The horses, but the interior doesn't uh, higher sets available. Um, yeah, right but, guy's going to bet with his six blocker and a gut shot. And a set, and yeah, I guess a pop, pop set blocker. 
Cop stat blocker. Can you even say that? No, no. Is that even a yeah, thing? No, it yeah, no, yeah, it is. That is very relevant. Um, uh, nah, yeah, um, I don't. Vince probably actually just got a call because the board is uh, straightened out. Um, this is actually a hand where. Ooh, oh, no. This is actually a. Ooh, this is really dangerous. Uh, this could cause some action to happen because Ben is going to be putting him on a straight. So. Uh, ben probably is check raising here. Or, oh, he's gonna call. It. Check call. Check call. Yeah, they. How much is right guy? Yeah, they're pretty deep. So check call makes sense. Um, Let's see what the river card brings here. Big river card. Ten, Ten. is gonna give right guy the better boat. Yep, yep. And Fifteen. I like. I love the bet. <laughs> and here, you know, right guy has to raise. Um, he's just trying to figure out what can he raise for to get called by. A smaller pocket boat. threes, pocket fours, straight uh, seven four, seven three. Is yeah. what you're trying to tell uh, you. He knows he doesn't have a seven. Uh, I think I think if I think he knows if Ben had a seven four seven three, uh, it's probably a bigger raise. But he's still targeting fours, threes, five six. Um, I like. And I like the size actually because I think five six is gonna have a hard time oh, letting go as well. Yeah. Yeah, Ben. It's really tough for Ben to fold here, just because my guy's representing a straight on the flop, and then he runner runners to a boat. <laughs> Sick game here. Yeah. Nice pot there for my guy. As I was just saying, we haven't heard much from my guy. We're the least best pot here, probably at sixteen hundred. Put a little bit of a dent into Ben's stack here, but Ben still with the massive stack of thirteen k. That's actually one of those polarizing things Ben just did. That's like a, that's a, I, you mainly see that in Hold'em, where you're, you you do that. I've seen some hold players do that. Do that down bet to uh, to induce a bluff. To induce or to um, yeah, but I don't think I don't think I don't think uh, because okay, let's put it from this standpoint. If Ben is putting him on a straight, is a straight straight just gonna call and realize see if they can win, right? He's just gonna take it as a check, which is exactly what he should like take all that stuff. He's hoping uh, at that point he's hoping Rai guy <laughs> doesn't have it, so he's changing his thought process here. He's hoping Rai guy doesn't have it free and is turning his hand into a complete block. I'm sorry, the so would you have preferred a larger, say, like, blocker size bet, and then uh, if Rai Guy pots it, I prefer, it if, if, if <laughs> Ben is going to bet, I, 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 <laughs> Ben should be doing one of two things. Either he should be bet folding, so betting, and if he gets, if he gets, if he gets major action against him, just fold, fold. It's, it's but, essentially bottom boat. Yeah, but you have to yeah. have this process already in your head, head or you're gonna cover. you're gonna talk yourself out of it. Yeah, yeah. But I guess or my, I call. personally, if I'm arriving there on the river, well, with well full, no, not well, um, just the place we went. Betting, oh. trying to target to a seven, and if they raise, and they yeah. always have a better boat. Right? Yeah. They boated up with a ten seven. Exactly. They, up with a seven. they randomly have a seven four or <laughs> seven three. You know? Yeah. I wouldn't even mind a check call because my guy can't really put him on too much because then check call, check call on the. On the on the flop, so so he could have the straight. But ben, it's really hard for Ben to have a straight here <laughs> okay. because he checked call. That makes sense. It, it looks like he's drawing to something. So if he, I would have preferred a check call there because I think I think I think Ryan goes for a down bet if he check calls. Uh, this is actually I'm, I'm excited that this flop came here. So we got a monotone flop, but no player with a flush. So I've always really been interested in these spots in PLO, right? Where it's so multi-way. We're like, oh, well, someone's got to have flush, but no, no one does. This so, is like, these how, are the spots that these, these are the spots that Ben is going to win more than most because he's the Good aggressive. Hit, yeah, I, I call uh, uh, they're someone I know. They're this. called orphan pots. So on uh, yeah, boards like that, uh, where people don't look very it interested, they look like, Ben. Ben will just take him down. Yeah, ninety percent of the time. Yeah. And uh, with him leading it, uh, with it, with it, I think checked around on the flop, right? Yeah. And so, so um, putting in a strong bet there, um, as long as no one has has a second or third nuts, it's a strong tip to taking that down, especially being first to act. Because a lot of people do that. A lot of people check uh, check uh, with a nut flush, hoping they get at, hoping someone bets their king high flush. Yeah, on, exactly. On, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, behind them, and then they either <laughs> check raise or they call in bet on the turn. So it yeah, makes a lot of, of sense. His story uh, makes a lot of sense there <laughs> to bet on the turn when everybody checks. So, and Ben is Ben recognizes those spots even when they're not there. So, so he's gonna take he's gonna take a lot of those spots down uh, on boards like that. It was a good that was a good play by Ben. Discount. 
guys wanted me to loosen up. JP gone? I think he's taking a little bit of a break. Oh, okay. Looks like. Okay. I just had a funny cigarette, so I'm okay. Depends on your definition. Yeah, I, I, I know he's dealing with, he's pretty card dead right now, so. Probably just trying to clear his mind. Refocus. Can I get a crown of sprite, please? Yeah. Please. And a, and a right. napkin as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, a lot of sporadic hands, nothing really real premiums. Oh, right guy flops a set of eights with a nut flush draw. So this is one of those hammer lock hands, right? Hammer lock, yeah. Uh, so how does he only have 20? What's going on here? Well, cards left in the get deck. Gary has a has a has a full wrap. It's a straight flush draw. He can hit a, yeah. He can hit a, he can hit the three of, uh, three of clubs, and then he has he can hit the. See, that just boggles my mind. That top yeah. set enough flush draw has less equity than Gary's hand. Right yeah, now. he can hit a set of clubs, three of clubs, and then any, and then uh, no, uh, Papa any, any five brother. or six. Wait, what does seven of clubs do? Northwest Highway. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, he, sorry, he cannot hit the seven of clubs. So he can hit anything, any of the sevens besides the seven of clubs. But the three of clubs gives him the straight punch. I was looking at Rye Guy's hand when so I So I guess that. because Gary has so many clubs in his hand, that makes that kind of reduces the equity in Rye Guy's hand, maybe? Well, did he fold his... Yeah, I guess so. Because uh, it went bet from Ben. Uh, ben with bottom two pair against top set, which is the nightmare scenario for him. Uh, I, I don't know if I, that's a. I don't know if I, I, make, I don't know if I can make that fold. That's a tough fold for Gary's holding. Yeah, that's a. You you, you uh, know you're because because you're blocking. You have the five six of clubs, so you don't have to worry about if you hit those. Your straight is still uh, still good. You have the three of clubs because that gives you the straight of flush. So the only out that's gone is oh, your seven man, of clubs. I can't keep on making and then the other flush draws. But you, you have a lot of your outs still in, in your hand. Because usually you're that's missing like three of those cards. Right. And yeah, I mean, you also got to keep in mind there's my only 13 other. There's only 13 of one suit in the deck, yeah. right? So like <laughs> uh, <laughs> having three in your hand makes it less likely you're going to hit your flush, uh, anyways. Especially so. at his stack depth, I'd be more likely just to. Let's get it in. Yeah, he had a lot of outs. Yeah, that's one of those spots where we, we all miss him. Uh, I miss those spots, too. I, I, de I definitely do. We all do in this game. Yeah, and you, you can't blame Gary there, I guess. Yeah. You don't, he doesn't know what everyone else holds. Right? Yeah. But, yeah, but with that stack depth, I think, it, I think it's never wrong to just get it in there, especially when Ben comes along. Because... But I have a premium. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once Ben is in there, your wrap is good enough at that point. You, even, if, even if you know the flush draw is gone, even if you know some of your cards. Because you, for his straights, he's only missing the seven of clubs. Sure. That is it. So he, so he takes away his clubs. He still he still has a, a good amount. A lot amount. of equity, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's one of those spots where it's like... You have to, you have to be willing to gamble in this game uh, uh, when your equity is is there. You have to. Um, and that was one of those spots where you have to be like, okay, this is one of those spots. Let's go. Okay, looks like JL will make a big raise here with the uh, single suit ace. Okay, yeah. Kind of the, with the dangler six. This is one of the this is one of those weaker aces because his jack and six are nowhere near connected. His six is a complete dangler. Like you'd almost prefer that but, jack to be like a four or five. Six. Yeah, That's but correct. but he accomplished what he was trying to accomplish. He got it heads up. And a pretty good flop here for oh, JL, this, but it's gonna Ben get in. has the top middle set. It's going to get in. Uh, JL still has the has the flush draw with an uh, with an over with the over pair of aces. It's going to get in here. Uh, JL can't fold at his stack depth. Yeah, for him, he knows like he's probably behind here, uh, but he's just probably going to get it in. Oh, on a coordinated board like that, that's one of the worst <laughs> things for aces. But because he has the nut flush draw, uh, and uh, he had like what a two and a half to one spot. For, yeah, it's one of those spots where he'll have enough equity to get it in there. Yes, get it in. Oh, and there it is, the top set. Big. Yeah. Top set for JL. Yeah, it looks like a bad beat, but because of the pre-flop action and his stack, his stack depth ratio, he played that. Per yeah, that's standard. Pretty standard. Um, it would actually have been a mistake for him to fold on the flop um, with, his, with, his, with him having with him having the nut flush draw there and the over pair. You're never drawing dead. No, <laughs> with her, yeah. you're never and, and you're never drawing dead. 
and your set of aces might be oh, good too. Yeah. He doesn't, club. Ben doesn't have to have a straight. Yeah. Right. And, and Ben even, right. you saw Ben tap the table. He knew that was a spot that. that was pretty standard. <laughs> yeah. like, that's, ben is making the same play in that spot. There's, there's uh, I, I would think all these players are making the same play once they've uh, three bet uh, in that spot with that stack. I know I would. I mean, yeah. with my limited knowledge, if, if I see that flop, I'm like, yeah. all right, I'm, I'm getting yeah. there. If you're if you're super deep, it's probably a mistake. But with his stack up, it's that's pretty easy. Nice little pop there for JL. Now only down 900. You saw that bit with a 92% deep hit? 93%. Yeah, I don't know how relevant deep hips are in PLO. Just because oh, no, how, it's very relevant. So <laughs> if I, it is. a player like Ben, my three bet range opens up. An extra in like 20%. That's why, that's one of the reasons why Dustin bought him for 10K again, because he's in if position. They, if yeah. they play long enough, Dustin's three bed range will open up against Ben. Right, I promise you. Um, the deeper you are, the, 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 the little bit looser you can get versus a player like Ben. Uh, a pre flop because you're so deep, and when you're in position, you're naturally just going to make less mistakes than the person out of position. Carter here looking to make drive the action here in position with the ace jack nine three double suits. Ooh. Single suit to the ace. JL's hand is almost real nice. Uh, he'll probably just call here. He, I, I like his hand, but it's just it's no suits. Just yeah. no suits. This is probably one of the few combinations. Nine, nine to ace are one of the few combinations I'm a proponent of. Uh, he flop strips. I'm, the, I'm a proponent of uh, playing that's a rainbow hand um, when you have a nine to ace hand. Um, just because of your connectivity. All the cards are connected in some way. Yeah, yeah. and the, the it's, high card value. Yeah, yeah, that's sort of becoming bad luck. This could be so. a big pop between JP and JL. Trip aces for JL and trip aces for Carter, too. I didn't even see that. JP is actually probably hoping for a raise. JP probably wants to get it in here. Yeah, there's just too many other. There's. It's going to be hard for him to play the turn and river, especially. There's six cards that can pair. Yeah, especially he's out of position. So it's going to be really hard for him to play. Play, I don't play hands. Uh, any turn card. Any yeah. turn like, card. He's, I don't know what he's looking for on the, uh, other than like an eight. Right? He doesn't, I don't know what he's like. <laughs> if you don't know what you're looking for in the spot, you don't know if this is a good card with, when you know both players have an ace. It's like you don't know what a good card is. But at his stack to death ratio, he's doing the right thing. It's like, let's just uh, see where the cards fly. Let's see where they fall. And he'll. He's probably on the turn here. He's probably either going to triple up here. Or go bust though. I don't see JL getting too aggressive here. I just see JL calling. Uh, what? What is he after? Yeah, I see JL calling and Carter's probably just calling as well. So he's either going to triple up here or. It's almost like a game of chicken between JL and Carter, right? Because they're just trying to figure out, like, they, okay, did you pair now? Ooh. Wow, and he gets, he gets the ace king to fold, which is actually huge for Carter now. Surprised. He had ace king 10 9, right? Yeah. Exactly. So there's only one more nine. With that, now Carter has to, might have to fold. Carter probably calls if JP calls, if JL calls. And as we can see on the screen, the only nine left in the deck is the nine of hearts. So that'd be absolutely just disgusting if the nine of hearts comes around the river. Maybe JL was also thinking that that Car him and Carter were sharing out. That could have been his thought process there. And he did, and he was out of position. He would have threw up in his mouth if <laughs> if Carter raises him. Uh, did, did JL have a four? No, he had ace king no, ten. No, ace king to nine. That's, he, right. he had, that's why I was surprised he folded. He had three overs yeah. to the eight. Um, but uh, it it makes sense because he's not closing the action. Carter can't. Carter can't have ace eight there. All right, let's play big. And 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 it would put. Jail in a tough spot if he calls for a third of his stack just to pull. So, nice pop uh, there for JP, though. Again, it's been this, a little quiet, but uh, yeah. went a decent one. Up about 2K now. Yeah, this goes back to my, my I don't think folding is wrong there. It, how much variance do you want to introduce in your life? So, I I think calling there is fine. I think folding there is fine on what JL did. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, he, he played that just fine, especially being out of position to, to Michael Carter. I mean, you'll see it. I don't care. I flopped a, I flopped a monster. It's been an exciting stream so far. If y'all been enjoying our PLO stream so far, hit that like button. Hit that sub button. Let us know if you've been enjoying the stream in the live stream chat. We'll be sure to do more PLO streams in the future.
and have commentators like uh, Alfred here joining me tonight. My nine was coming. Though. Good to see J <laughs> JP sure bringing coming. in a pot. I know he's been uh, been a pretty card dead this game. So it's nice to see him bringing the pot. Well, and like you said, you don't need to play yeah, that many so hands at PLS to be profitable. It, it, it's this one that one hand might be enough for him for the session, right? And, and uh, you got to be really selective. Obviously. You can be like more, probably more passive pre flop, but <laughs> no, once you get on the flop, you, well, really, well you, right? you really need to know what your hand is in reference to other players. You need to know where your hand is, and you have to be willing to press sometimes. You can't, you cannot be too passive in this game when, when you when you have strong equity. You have to be willing to press. I want you to get sticky, right? Kimmy Stone in the chat says, "Great job commentating, you guys. Loving the action." Thank you so much, Kimmy. Hope to see you on one of these PLO streams soon enough. You can you can definitely play the game. And then depending on your holding, sometimes it could be a mistake to be overly aggressive with your holding, right? Just because of how equities the hands or how close the equities can be, right? Like you're you're blowing in the pot, or you're uh, over committing. It's not necessarily a mistake. It's again, it goes back to how much variance do you oh, okay. want yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, you're right. I, li I like your answers. No, no, yeah. you're, you're right. You're right. Because I've heard I've heard you say that multiple times. There's just, do you want to be on a more higher variance? That is one of the beauties about PLO over Hold'em. In Hold'em, there's some pretty much there's some absolutes. This is a mistake. This is not. In PLO, it's honestly how much variance do you really want to introduce? I guess probably another another uh, yeah. probably like a, another tier to that is how big is your bank, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's probably that's. That goes, that goes hand in hand, right? Yes. The the how much variance you want to introduce, and then how big your variance is. That's, that's, that's what makes this game great. So if you're a whale, and you know you're the worst player, <laughs> like that's what rid of me. That's why whales because, gravitate uh, to this time, game. It's because they can go a bit more than the player of the game. But they have more money to But they have the variance on their side. Exactly. So, like, I think everybody knows Dong, right? Has a lot of money. He's one of those players where he only, in PLO, he needs one, one hand. And so against a player like that, if I beat him in a couple of hands and I'm up 5, 6, 7K, well, guys, it's time for me to hit the old dusty trail. Right, that, that's where he thrives. That's where he thrives, right? Exactly. He needs one hand. I've seen the man down like 50, 60K in a PLO game. And I come back and he's he's, he's up 15, 20. We said that, we said like he needs I one, two hits. Like that man is, man is a god when it comes to I said, I said, kind of, because he's not just he's <laughs> not your typical whale. Sorry, he's a whale yeah, that well, actually I'm has a lot of PLO yeah, knowledge. Yeah, so like it's it's when you get a player like that. That is, in my opinion, the most dangerous player in PLO. A whale that has. Strong nope. PLA go, <laughs> because he's going to give you a lot of action, but he just <laughs> needs that one. And when he gets it, he'll crush it. <laughs> yeah, he plays big PLO. I, I don't know if he still plays big PLO down there, but in Houston, they have like a 25 1500 game. We good. Uh, I've heard him talk about it a few yeah. times. I, I think <laughs> he's been playing <laughs> like more. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't I think like, he's been down there lately. I've been seeing him, been seeing him a lot place. more lately. Uh, I think he's enjoying game, hold him. I think he's enjoying not, not having those big swings. swings. Yeah. Uh, because his style does require a lot of swings. So uh, he's been playing up here more in the, in the Holden streets. I will say that you got really no, good referrals. So, I mean, that, that's actually great really knowledge good, uh, that you just um, put out there, Alfred. I mean, for any of our viewers out there that feels like the player pool of them is, like, too tough um, because... The, uh, it's easier to, you know, whatever, you know, be Ryan aggressive free flop and push people out of the pot. If you have the money for it, Pilos the, might be the game for you. Yeah, I mean, the equities run so much closer. Uh, oh, in, in the live format, it's not solved at all, like yeah. you were saying. So it, it, it's probably the better route to go if you feel like, yeah. you know, you're playing a lot of no limit and then um, noticing this. Like, yeah. This might not be the game for me. It's boring. These players don't talk to me. It's not as lively. It, the PLO's got everything going for it. It's more fun. Yeah. Uh, if you have the money for it, the variance is on your side. Mm -hmm. You can really put people in tough spots. And Yeah, uh, like, if, if you're a whale and you're willing to gamble pre-flop <laughs> and hold them, you're probably only winning, what, 15, 20% of the time uh, if, if against, like, a really good lineup. I don't care how strong the lineup is in PLO. You're going to be a 35 to 40 percent winner if you if have you, the variance. If you have the, if, yeah. you, if you create that variance free flop, um, 
because the equities run closer together in PLO, if you create that variance preflop as as a as a whale with a lot of money, <laughs> um, you're just you, you're gonna find yourself. That, that's why they stay in PLO usually if they if they try it out because they're like, oh wow, oh, I'm actually successful. <laughs> I, I want a bunch of money tonight. Like it's it's it, I they they definitely once they come to PLO they don't they don't usually go back. <laughs> It's not mine. It's yeah, that's an interesting see. comment. Joey Pigtails in the chat what says, biggest pot I've ever won was 17K. Side yeah. pot in St. Yeah. Hand was 43K. Yeah. I have and the whale who lost, I was on 75K. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah. 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 Because, again, all that whale needs is one. And the, he can absolutely crush Just demolish the you, yeah. yeah it's, it's a, it's a, it's a so great lucky, game. It's so lucky, man. Yeah, I might... I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a few I'm gonna give it a few months, but I, I I'm, I'm probably gonna try to hop into PLOs. Soon, but, uh, I would recommend that. I, 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 I might be I might be messaging you yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. I, if you don't mind. I'm, oh yeah, like I'm 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 truly an advocate of it. even starting off. If you just stick to ABC PLO, even then, like what that'll do for you because uh, because like I said, PLO knowledge wise is. 20 years is what Hold'em was 20 years ago. Like you're, you'll still be a break even to slightly winning play. I'd be happy to break even. Yeah, like <laughs> to start off. <laughs> like or even more than that if the variance is, is on your side. Sure. Um, but I, I think at worst over a sample size you'd be a break even player. Just being an ABC player in this game because it's uh, uh, because uh, the knowledge base is just not. Tight, tight is yeah. right. Tight is right. You really can't. You can't overstudy in this game because there's just not a like. The solvers just like I said. There's not enough situations apply. to study for, or, yeah. or there's, no, sorry, there's too many there's situations. Too many. Yeah, there's, there's too, many. too many situations. Like there's like your solvers are really I've only solved the game up to six max. Six max, heads, probably a hundred big blinds. Six max <laughs> yeah. to, to heads up to three way pots. Yeah. Like it, even at a hundred big blinds. Yeah. Like it's yeah, just not even the two hundred big blinds. It's yeah. yeah, it's well, well, some of them have they, they've Once started getting the two to three hundred big blinds. But then but that's probably just heads up. Right? Heads up yeah. to two yeah. to three way, you know? and there's and there's just like, it's like a, look at look at some of these stacks like 10k 15k like like the stack to to uh, the stack that the, the big line ratio is so deep that like there's just the math the math is just it's too complex for solvers right for, for solvers right now to solve so um, you don't have to worry about six guys at the table uh, playing GTO because there just there's no such thing as GTO and PLO. River card's going to give Gary the nuts here. And JL does have a straight here to the queen. Uh, probably going to get the bad news here. Is Gary's probably going to pot it here for value. Uh, I don't know if he's going to... Maybe not pot, but maybe make it like 350 or 400. Yeah, if he pots it, honestly, he's only getting value from... The other straight uh, from Jack King. Uh, Jack Seven is not even going to give him value. Um, I like. I I would even more of like to see like a mid click here, um, just to, so because even if you mid click it, people are going to want to just pay it to see what you have. Um, this uh, this like jail. We'll make a call here with with. 10-8, or Jack-7. No, Jack-10-8. He has to call with two pair. No, no, he has a straight. Oh, yeah, he has a straight yeah, to the queen. Saying, yeah. Sorry. To the queen. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. And, uh, for those of y'all in the chat, um, you know, give Alfred a little bit of a break. This yeah. is his first time uh, watching through this format and commentating. And it's, obviously, I I, uh, I don't want to toot my horn too much, but I make it look a lot easier than it actually is. It, it, it's, I've been doing it for about two years now. Uh, it, it's it's very hard to follow. So yeah, don't don't make sure y'all don't uh, give it offer too much crap in the chat. Let's see here. Kimmy Stone says Hayden just said that you like grinding this game? Question mark. People just getting stacked all the time. LOL, and you get sucked out for all the chips. But you could be the one doing the sucking out, <laughs> right, Kim? You know, wink, wink. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, 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 so this other very um, prominent PLO player in the world, Jane Andes, um, you know, when I, I used to watch some of his videos very frequently, and 
the thing I always heard him say was rank and connectivity, right? In your hand, sorry. And anytime, the, few, the very few times I played earlier, I just try to keep that in line. Rank, connectivity, rank, connectivity. And like, even though I see like a suited ace, I'm just like, oh, I'll just fold it sometimes just because like, it doesn't have the rank or connectivity that I want. To be comfortable. That's one of those hands that out of position, I'm folding. In position, I'm seeing flops just because with that, you want to have the implied a, odds of hitting, the, the and you want to have a strategy. Or... You don't necessarily just want to rely on hitting your flush. There's going to in position. There's just going to be a lot more situations where you're going to be able to down, take down a pot. Right. But when it checks to you. Exactly. Whatever. So you and you probably you have, have a decent more, amount of equity anyway. You have more ways of winning with your equity. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it just depends on. It, it just depends on uh, where you are. That's why I say like the more position you are, the less these rules apply once you have a strong knowledge base. Oh yeah, for me, I was just talking about like if I were to just start. Oh playing yeah, no, no, I want to stick with the basics. <laughs> exactly. When, yeah. when I, I didn't start breaking away from the basics until like three years into PLO. Like I, okay. stu I stuck to, I was, I stuck to the basics pretty strong. I think the only bluffs I really did were the ace high flush blocker and the occasionally uh, pocket pair blocker. Um, so. And even then, you have to your knowledge should be a little bit stronger before even you do the pocket pair blockers. So, so um, Gary, we'll make the yeah. call here with the gut shot and two pair. Hits the gut shot right on the turn there, which is going to give Faisal um, the queen high straight. So we got nuts against second nuts here. So this could be get this could get dicey here for Faisal. Okay, so Faisal. Oh, he's not deep enough to do what I want. I was gonna tell him to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he has to fold. Uh, yeah, so it's one of those weird spots. If they were deep enough, Basil could call there with the hope, uh, with the hope of a king, even an ace, or he could. He has the spade blocker, the ace high flush blocker. If they were deep enough, that's still a hand that. He, he could, could take it. He could take the pot away if the spade rolls off, and then he still can draw. Three. <laughs> yeah, or even like an ace or a king. Yeah. So like, there's cards that he can bluff there with if they were deep enough. Shallow, he did the right thing. He just got pulled. Which is uh, I like this comment. Which is like almost unheard of, right? We have the second nuts just fold. Read this comment. Yeah, Mo the cat here says, "Hey commentators, I hear that PLO is taking over for one reason or, or other, but." This has been like this for the last 15 years. Still, Hold'em is the overwhelming favorite of the players. I think Hold'em will always be the most popular game, just because it has the less the barrier to entry is, is so, so much, much lower. Less. Yeah. yeah, so much lower. Like it's an easy game. I, 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 I the first thing I heard about Hold'em. And you probably can't. Learn, you probably can't master. like learn PLO that well unless you kind of have a moderate understanding of no limit. So. Or do you think, or not, not a moderate, but like at least a, a decent background. No, on I think it's actually card. probably easy to learn PLO if I wouldn't have known Hold'em. Oh, that's, just, just go in. That's what, wow, okay. yeah, that's what, that's what makes, uh, that's what makes it harder for Hold'em players to get into, because they're games. trying to apply Hold'em principles to PLO. So you, when you're, when you're learning PLO, you have to de-learn, unlearn not, uh, some things that you do and hold them or not apply I didn't say unlearn but not apply some things you, you learn and hold them and um, and it's just there, there's, there's some things that are just counterintuitive to what you would do in hold them um, so I guess I mean Mark raised a great point too with like with solvers being more and more readily available uh, uh, to players and I mean even I'm, I've even talked to some like very serious rec players that know that use solvers, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and that, that's kind of scary to think about, right? Yeah. For a two card game, even even people that play this game maybe once or twice a week have access to solvers yeah. very easily, uh, like um, GTO. Was very, you know, I mean that's a very basic one, yeah. but uh, it when a game like PLO isn't really available, like doesn't really have solvers, that's probably like. <laughs> The safer yeah, game to play, right? If you're trying to make money every game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Hold'em will always be the most popular <laughs> game, but it's just going to get more and more difficult. Like yeah, Mark is saying. but you're going to start seeing the reason. Okay, so Houston is the one city where I've seen that has more PLO than Houston. The reason is, or more PLO than No Limit. More PLO than Hold'em. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, the reason is. Uh, Houston is also one of the wealthiest cities in, 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 the, in the country, and all the big the money doesn't stop. So all the big money players have just realize they have much more fun. They get more bang out of their buck when they play PLO. Um, so that's why it's taken over in Houston. But for the general population who are just there to have fun and relax, hold them. 
gives them that. I think Hold'em will always be the more popular outlet for people to play poker. Who um, is? Um, but I think I do think PLO could one day be set. Be a close set. But I don't think it'll ever be the most popular. Which probably might be a good thing, right? In the long run, right? Like yeah. if it's constantly the second, then people are going to constantly overlook it. Well, right? I, I know some I know some pros that they can't apply solvers to it. They're not moving to the game. Of, uh, and this is why oh, that's I'm, I'm I'll, I'll, I'll hop and feel and I know whatever the pros are going to apply. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. so, but there's some pros that won't. That's and great, so, yeah. but like, there's one. That's, I, I don't think PLO will have to worry about an oversaturation of of of. Of, of too many players, in, uh, to, which would attract more pros, and pros aren't going to get into it because they can still, they can, they're still very popular on the, pop, pop on the hold side because the game is still popular. So as long as hold will uh, remain the most popular game, and it will, I think, stay the most popular game. It'll keep the alone. It'll be safe for exactly. Play. Exactly. Goes, we don't know who that is. It's pros that are willing to play PLO, it will yeah, yeah. benefit them. <laughs> Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely very interesting uh, to talk about. And I really do appreciate you bringing all these points well, for our viewers because um, I think a lot of our viewers probably may, be, might be a little hesitant to hop into the uh, PLO streets. Maybe like, you know, some of our viewers even said in the chat, it's just bingo. Um, and you know, I think you talking about this brings to light, you know, the benefits of playing PLO or, um, you know, there's a lot more strategy than, than, than meets the eye. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do appreciate you bringing out those points. Up. Yeah. Like I said before, for people that weren't here earlier, because there are no solvers for live PLO, like the amount of different strategies you see people apply is different. So it, you get different kind of games um, in PLO. It's not like it's not like a stand like two five. You'll say, oh, that's a standard two time, right? Like so. Like, uh, there's like four pros, five pros, a couple of decent players, and maybe one or two like bad players. In PLO, you get all these combinations of uh, of. Of good players, uh, recreational you. players, some recreational players that are uh, that are good players. Like I, I would classify Michael Carter, he's a recreational player, um, but, but probably a, probably a solid winner. His player, knowledge yeah. base is what one of the strongest about? I've ever seen. No one knows like, what you're talking about. His, like, and that's for all years of playing. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't see it, it, you don't see a, a player who like Michael Carter. I think in hold my hand. Who who's um, no. He's never, he's never it's made his, honor. he's never made his living off of, off of poker. <laughs> he does it recreational, I mean, but I mean, I'm, he's I'm, a profitable I'm, player I'm, because I'm, his I'm, knowledge I'm, of the I'm, game is so yeah, wide. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, his experience, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. like he's been playing yeah. these kind of games. Yeah. If I, I had to guess, yeah. probably yeah. For 20, yeah. 25 yeah. years. So, and his ability to apply that knowledge. Uh, in, a, in a game where there's no solvers. That's why he's gravitated to mixed mix, mix games is because there's no solvers for this game. So for, for him to apply his knowledge uh, just gives him a, a huge advantage over players in, in PLO, Hilo, uh, and other mixed games that he likes to play. This got worse. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, me, even me personally, I've kind of gravitated to <laughs> actual mixed limit games. Well, you know? So like, because like I mean, I imagine there's really not that many solvers for, or probably not even any solvers no, there's for no, mixed. Sweet, man. There's no. Cool. So, <laughs> uh, anything that is, especially anything that's a split pot game, there's no solvers for. It. Right. Um, so like my the game where we're, we're playing we're Raz Ducey or yeah. Bat Baducey, right? <laughs> well, almost all your games are split pot games. Yeah, yeah a lot they're, of them are. Yeah, there's they don't even they had not even started trying to do solvers for split pot games. That's good. Please don't. <laughs> yeah. So even so, if you play high low, you're you're safe. You're 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 completely safe from solvers if you play high low. Like the math, like the more variables you have, you add the math just it just compounds exponentially. What if I said she replaced oh, we got a paired board. This actually is probably uh, Gary checks. Uh, just going to turn the nuts for yeah. Gary, which is probably over. So yeah, you can yeah. continue. On these hands where it's like a lock, we don't really yeah. have to talk much yeah. about it because it's yeah. not much exciting. Except Carter actually is going to bet. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Let me go I think I had to make the call, too, with his, o with his over pair and the uh, gut. Oh. Okay, is Gary pops the kill. This is one of those few times where I would have liked to I mean, see 
a smaller race. Right now, Harry Hines. Oh, Gary, like almost a mid race, right? Yeah, you, you're you're just pulled, like you're just not giving them any room to make a mistake here. At least if he bets, if he raises the 800, that's a good 15. Nine hundred. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, you're trying to target a 10, which yeah. you don't want a 10 to fall, yeah. which would be disastrous. Right? Because yeah. he has the Jack Blocker. He, like, uh, only cards he doesn't want to see is a three or eight. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, so it's one of those spots where you don't want to slow play, I would say, but you want to allow your players to make a mistake, right? So I would have liked to see an eight, nine hundred dollar raise, and, and at least allow them. Especially uh, those players are good, so they're not going to make that mistake. Probably they're probably folding anyway. But if they have a ten, say he has ten ace keys, he's. He, he, they're probably calling, <laughs> and they're not getting the right price to call with six minutes, right? So it's one of those things where I would, I would, I would like to see Jerry switch it up there and you know, try, to, try to get some value from those hands. So as we're switching up dealers here, it looks like we got Suzanne dealing the second half here. Uh, thank you so much to Brittany dealing the first half. did a great job, I think. Uh, there she gets about 25 hands. You know? No, I think that'd be right. That's more you than did. that, because we were on hand 20. <laughs> we're two hours in. Yeah, we, no, we were on hand 20 back when that air happened. Right? Yeah, so so she probably got like 40 or 50, which yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. 20 hands an hour at PLO. That, that's I don't on a stream game as well. Yeah. That's, that's pretty solid from Brittany. So yeah. Yeah. really appreciate her dealing yeah, first half. Yeah, your average is going to be uh, at least five hands less. Yeah, yeah. A, a low in nine if there's a lot of a lot of action. Or the dealers in experience. The high end, um, if, if there's just 20 to 25, if there's no, if there's no uh, action, you get like, yeah, like, uh, in an hour you'll get like anywhere between, so yeah, anywhere between 18 to, if there's no action, and the hands are just going quick, 28 minutes. Yeah, so it looks like we got a shot of our room here. Of course, full house as always. Uh, we can see a PLO game running right now, I think, in table eight. See a lot of PLO regulars there. I know there's one. I know there's another five-five. Same format as this. That's going off stream. Yeah, yeah there's another five-five going. Oh, you, you're gonna get on the list after this. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't. Uh, if I if I play, I usually like to play. I usually like to start around. Midday. Yeah. Well, like around five or six. And play to like ten or eleven. I only like playing five or six hour sessions. I'm I'm actually well. So I like the sand the same way. But on those days where I get like stuck or something, I end up playing way longer than I should probably. And I, I've I've even noticed that's why it's so good to track the results too. I mean, it's kind of a side note. Um, you can literally see the days where you like, or at least for me personally, I can see the days where I extend myself over like seven eight hours where I have a looting session way more often. And it's like, wait a minute, if I just keep myself at the four to six hour range, I'm a hugely profitable player. And then like, like my biggest tip to players is don't quit or stop based off of if you're winning or losing. Sure. Remember, it's one long session. Yeah. So unless you're playing poker for the rest of your life, which I don't think any of us are, just remember it's one long session. If you don't feel like playing poker anymore, go home. I don't care if you're winning or losing. What? That's that goes if, if, if you're winning, yeah, if you're winning and you, you double up the first hand or triple up the first hand, but you still feel like you're playing your game, you're excited or happy to play. Yeah, just keep playing. Like don't like don't be like don't let results dictate your sessions. Like, like I'll, I'll just I'll, if you're feel if you feel like you're playing your A game. Uh, and I guess the opposite too, right? If you start to feel like you're getting a little bit tilted. Exactly. Um, I, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm I, get, I get kind of bad about this too. I'll like sometimes play through eating, and like I'll, I, I've also noticed too is like if I get really hungry, I start playing terribly, yeah. and that's when I should leave. Right? That's why I'll, I, 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 I'm especially. Uh, that's why I'm, you play during the midday. I'm, well, I'm older. I'm like I'm 36, and I and uh, I have to be more health conscious. So I don't like eating when I play. So I eat a I eat a my the biggest meal of the day is usually before I come play, and then I bring like a little granola bar. Yeah, like three or four hours in to eat, and then by that time I'm hungry again. I go home and I eat my dinner. Um, I, I, I don't like anything to cloud my mind. I, I've noticed that too. If I, I guess I need to be better about trying to get a routine. Like the, the 
of days where I you know, wake up, I have a, like a solid meal, and then I come and play, or the days that I, like, you know, I play my A game or play my A. It's when I like try to, um, you know, I forget to eat and come here and play, and then I'm like ordering food, and then I'm eating, and then or I forget to eat, and I'm even hungrier, and then it's like it's just a bad combination. So. I'm a very it, it, it makes you really realize. Yeah, sorry. No, no, I'm a I'm a very routine person. Only the winners can blind eye his. Everything, right. everything compiles on you. Like you make a bad mistake in the day, you notice that it compiles. No, I, and I, it, it makes you realize how much more of your mind you're actually using when you're playing. Yeah. It, it's when you're making mistakes, like, oh, and how much sleep did I get last night? Did I drink last night? Like, you really notice these things when you play a lot of hours, like me and Alfred. It's like, wow, like I, I you know, went out with friends, had a drink, and then I didn't eat breakfast for But I'm choosing to come and play, and I, you know, lost two buy-ins. It's like, why did I do that? Right? Where like. You have to have the, the mental wherewithal to be like, okay, Guys today's probably not the best day to play because I'm not all mentally I'm not going to play my own. I, that comment about that's what other players are banking like on. Do you come in here not playing your game, yeah. right? <laughs> and that's honestly my superpower. That that uh, um, so uh, viewer that couple, couple, uh, yeah, I appreciate the comment saying I'm one of the better players in the room. It's because of my consistency. I'm telling you, I don't. I I'm the same. I'm the same player every day. I I I tweak my strategy a little bit. I always I'm always trying to get better, of course. But, but, but in terms of wow. my mental focus, I'm the same. I, I try to, I, 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 I pride myself on, I don't tilt. If I'm on tilt, that means I don't feel like playing poker, guys. And guess what? When I don't feel like playing poker, I go home. So I've never, like, I, 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 I've actually had that, I've had that kind of discipline for the last, I don't know, 12, 14 years. Like, if I don't feel, if I get, if I go on tilt, that means I don't feel like playing poker. Yeah, yeah. If I don't feel like playing poker. You go home. Yeah, no, I, I've been really trying to really focus on that, on my yeah, mental yeah. state yeah. while I'm playing, and to really like hone in on that and try to do what you're saying. Like, if I'm not in the right mindset, I'm just I should leave, right? And um, Ben is gonna to, get aggressive on this hand. I used to be so bad at that when uh, I'd play a lot more up north, where yep. I would just be like, regardless of. I would, I would try to play through the tilt, right? <laughs> and then for all, for all of us in the chat, we all know that's a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> because you get impatient. Yeah. You start you start pressing more. You start you start playing more out of position, right? You start you start playing hands. The time between yeah. good hands feels even longer. Yeah. When you're when you're tilting. Yeah. I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna use the restroom. Yeah. I'm I'm, a, I'm I'm after you. <laughs> no, no, you go you go ahead. You go ahead. That's fine. J Bar Barres eighty would love to learn PLO, but match stack PLO is a huge game. Yes, but in cash games, my personal opinion, uh, that does not apply. Um, people, uh, I think people misconstrue that. Even in uh, in a tournament, the reason big stacks can bully you, right, is because your tournament life is at risk. Blinds go up, you have less maneuverability, right? So that is that is why. Big stacks matter in, in Wait, tournaments. In a cash game, guess what? If you buy into our one, two, five PLO for two hundred dollars, you're only in for two hundred dollars. And in PLO, the math is so close that if you have a hand like Ace Jack ten eight with Ace suited and it gets in three way, guess what? A three way pre flop, you have enough equity. I promise you, you're a winning player in that spot in the long run. Uh, for two hundred dollars. So, in cash games, uh, don't worry about the other big stacks. In fact, as a as a PLO player uh, who likes to play deep stack, I hate the small stacks because you guys can mess. You guys can literally. You guys can. You guys can cause so much chaos. It, it's ridiculous. Uh, small stacks in PLO have so much power in this game. That you you don't even you don't understand it's it's yeah, it's crazy, um, and you're always getting the right price. So like if if you re say I raise for forty, and you repop it to one seventy, and you have thirty dollars behind, but you reopen the action, uh, all of a sudden all these players have to worry about me for betting. It juices the pot more. It creates it creates a crazy dynamic. And guess what? All that dead money that enters the pot. Just gives you more, like, all of a sudden now you, you're getting the right price no matter what. 
So, uh, like, don't let the big stack scare you, man. Like, I, I, like uh, if That's you want to right? play PLO, here at Texas yeah, Card House, you can learn oh. fairly cheap. Sorry. Like, 200, like, minimum buy in, $200. And what I would recommend, the first time I played PLO, I, I literally one. just sat there Why? and watched the action. Like, I, I, I sat there with my money and just watched the action. And if I got ace, aces, single suited or double suited, I was in there and I, I was gambling it up. But anyway, I. I remember the first time I played. It's like just you can just sit there and, and just watch. Like if people are calling you man, you're you're tight. You're in, it's okay. You're there to learn, right? So don't be afraid. I was answering uh, this question. Would would love to learn PLO and match the stack. And I was telling them it doesn't really. I I I, I, I would say don't worry about that. It doesn't, it doesn't you got to keep like. in mind you're playing your effective stack. Too. So yes. Like regard and, and this goes for no limit as well, right? Like I hear people say, uh, I don't, don't want to hop. Yeah, I don't want to hop into. Uh, two five no limit here because of how deep it was. Just because you see someone with a ten k sack, you can buy in for the thousand dollar, even five hundred for a hundred big ones. You're playing your five hundred dollar effective stack, and honestly, you're kind of advantaged in the sense where they don't have any fold equity against you. That's what you can get it in with your not plus draw. You can get it in with your combo. Draw. You don't have to worry about getting stacked to ten k. Yeah, that's what I was telling them. Like as a deep stack PLO player, you guys, like I was telling, short stacks actually scare me. They have the advantage. Yes, because they can create so much chaos, especially free flop. You can create so much chaos. It's crazy because if you have the ability to reopen the reopen the uh, the action, and guess what? You're always getting the right price because you're always probably getting at least three to one on your money. <laughs> so you're you're getting such a good price, and you're reopening the pot. You're causing these. Like I've seen like a two hundred dollar stack cause a ten fifteen K pot pre flop. And they're all mad at the small stack because he was the one that reopened the pot. And it's like at the very least, you get to create so much chaos as a short stack. I, I I personally I hate it. That's why I also like the five five mush rattle because uh usually the minimum buy in is a thousand, so they they don't have as much power. Um, they still have some power at a thousand to do that kind of stuff. But uh they're, they're risking more, but in a one-two-five PLO, you can you can what I call f the play up. You can create so much chaos in a one-two-five PLO with two hundred dollars. It's insane. And looks like uh, we're gonna get some action here, and from the one seat, Medi here, aka Galoo, is gonna join us here. Oh, Medi's great for the game. Medi's, a, Medi's an awesome guy. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, you're welcome there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you don't want to take a look here. It looks like Ben's still leading the action here, up about 8,400. Are, are you saying you don't want us to scramble? Mark Wee says, I hate the small stacks and hold them, too. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, guys, hearing uh, hearing Alfred talk about this game is getting me really interested to try to learn PLO or at least try to play more of it. Oh, good. They don't see the trash I'm playing. Ben and Queen Jack for three. Double suits. Imagine will come in for at least a call. Yeah, and again, we're going to see a lot of loose. Passive play pre flop a lot of the time, unless you know holdings like Dustin, where he has Ace Deuce Jack 10 double suited. And pot it here, trying to isolate. Here we're gonna make the call here with King King Jack 5. And I imagine we're gonna see calls from Ben and JL. We're gonna go multi way as typical here in a, in a live PLO game. If I were to pick a hand here, I like I like Dustin's hand the best. It has the most playability, right? But you, you just don't know until the flop comes here. Let's come ace, ten, eight. Unfortunately for Dustin, he hits his top pair, but JL with the best hand right now with bottom set. And no one with giant. No, excuse me. Excuse me. Gary with the royal draw here. Oh my God. What's this guy's name? Medi. 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 Excuse me. Gary with the royal draw. And of course, gut shot to Broadway. Looks like Ben's going to come along with a double gutter. Any king, any nine. We'll give him the nut straight. On you, on you Susan. Oh, wow. It's right here. 
And look at that. King on the turn is going to give Ben the best hand. But Gary will have second set with the nut flush draw and the royal draw still. I think Dustin can pretty comfortably fold his hand here, even though flopping the top two pair, which, excuse me, I missed initially. And mass amount of equity change here. Dustin did have a mass amount of equity. JL actually had about 98% or about 90% on the flop, and that just all went to Dust when the king came out on the turn. Yeah, with the pot size bet, uh, I could definitely see. Oh, I didn't even see that he has clubs, too. Jeez. Yeah, that's why he's thinking so long. It's, uh, he's trying to decide. Um, they're pretty deep, so he might peel here. Just, But if they if he peels, I promise you he has a plan, even if he doesn't hit. So say, like, the eight pairs the board. I think I think something like that he would even might consider uh, putting in a bluff. He has a lot of options here. Yeah, uh, they're so deep that a, a call makes a lot of sense. Now Gary kind of put in the spot here. And again, out of position, probably the worst spot you want to be playing, yeah, he, especially in this game. Oh, well, he's uh, deciding whether to just get it in. Oh, who might call with this? Oh, I see what he's doing. He, uh, because he's, yeah, he actually does have enough equity here. Oh, and there's the royal. There's the royal flush. Wow. Bink City on the river here for Gary, and he will ship it all in, it looks like. Uh, no, excuse me, you're just going to bet 2K. Yeah, that, that's a that card is going to, yeah. It's it's one of those, because it's also a diamond, it's, oh, yeah, they, gotta, they just got to let it go. But Gary had the nut flush. Yeah, he was like, I didn't see that he had the, nut, uh, the flush draw with his uh, set. That was an easy call. For and, and I guess it's one of those spots, too, right, where folding sometimes is fine, too. But it's like, again, how much no. variance. Or no, he had set with the nut flush draw, No, right? he, has, he has too much equity to fold. Especially uh, once Dustin's in there, he's definitely getting the right price. I guess it was a matter of whether or not how, how high of a variance we will take, right? It's, it's hard. To call and just try to hit. And then so you're rarely folding a combo draw. Where right, right. So, he's, so he's not folding, but how often do you want to just try to get it in and then obviously pot Possibly break nice off in the neutral stack or just call and this then is, have some money. Honestly, uh, once Dustin calls there, uh, because he has all the nut outs, I would not have minded him just shipping it there. Okay. Um, because it's gonna, because it, with him being out of position, it's almost impossible for uh, him to get paid there. Uh, because now you're 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 taking over the action with two people to act behind you. It's just it's it's really hard to get paid there uh, out of position. Yeah, to bet that large on the river into two people yeah. is just you're screaming that you have a flush. Yeah, too, and, so. and plus I don't think he would have had a he didn't have a I think he only had like what three thousand behind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. Uh, less than five. <laughs> yeah, even in position I would have rathered him just ship it there if Dustin calls. Um, but if he's as deep as they are, I would actually like a just call because okay. it'll. Because then now at this point a bluff makes more sense, right? Uh, you, if you if you're potting if you're potting for 5k or I think it would have been yeah it would have been 5200. Uh, if you're potting for 5200 there, uh, would they check to you? It, it a bluff makes sense. Uh, you might get a straight to call you there. Wow, interesting spot here, JP against Becca here. Becca with the better trips. JP had, had all the unders, so it was pretty much, I think anyone who bets there probably you know, uh, because they because Becca's card is paired, if, if JP would have bet, if she had a pocket eight in her hand, I think if JP bets, she folds. He checks, so she bet. He, like, I think whoever bets first there wins that hand. The next hand here. And after that pot for Gary, now he's one of the big winners, up about 5K. We can see how swingy this game is. Dustin was up about 3,400 really early on. Lost that massive pot against Ben down to now 3,400. Oh, Ben? Uh, or, or just I'm saying how swinging the game. Oh, like, yeah, Dustin yeah. was up early of about 34, and then now he's down 34. Yeah, yeah especially when, when when you hit one of those spots versus another uh, deep stack player, it can definitely. It was late. I get it. He's a good player, though. He's a solid player. Yeah, talk about the swinging. Is game is uh, I was in a five-five 
game, I think it was two to three weeks ago, I started off the session down uh, down 6K. I was in for 6K, not down 6K. I was in for 6K. Uh, I was in for 8K. I was down. I was I was down 5K. I was in for 8K. And the, mind you, the session, the total session was like four hours long. It was in for 8K. Cashed out for plus 5K. <laughs> it was a really good game. <laughs> that's that's just insane. And only in four hours too. Huh? Yeah, it, but that's why. I, Wait, was I that do, here? Yeah, it was, uh, oh ta it was t table six. It was a good 5-5 five, five game. I think it was three weeks ago. Uh, but the game, uh, that's what I'm saying. I, I knew the game was so good if I could just, if I could just get Find that one hand. Well, I could just get to the pain. I was losing it. I was, I was taking it pretty sick. I was like, if I could just take the pain tolerance and... So uh, I, I, like I knew I would have a chance to get my money to win my, to yeah. be profitable. I've never game, so. Well, I, mean, I imagine that's what helped your mental state too, right? Every Knowing that you were, even though you were losing, you were losing a game where it could barely quit turn on, on a dime like that. I, well, I told myself going into that game, I was like, well, I'm, I, I'm willing to lose, I'm, I'm willing to lose 10k, so like it used to be so I just hope I can get 10k. <laughs> I already, I already told myself going into that game. Like, oh, okay, then, then you were. In the you're in the right method. Yeah, right yeah. Right. I, I got, I, 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 I lost one of those puzzles. Like, good hand, though. JL, uh, lucky to please. pot here. Essentially all in. Potting for 1700 on the turn with uh, a little bit of a combo draw here. Gary with. Gary's actually in a tough spot here because he has a wrap, but the flush draw blocks a, lot, blocks a good chunk of his out. So uh, JL taking uh, uh, taking the lead really smart on his part. Uh, Against two hands that are currently having him crushed in equity here. Yeah. Now. Not crushed, yeah. but a decent amount for both of them. Yeah. Which is a huge win for JL, right? If he can get Gary and Galoo to pull there. He, he's trying to get a hand like Gary to pull. That, this bet is... is, is his goal is trying to get a hand like East King Jack. That is what he's trying to do. Because one, it increases some of his outs uh, versus, a, versus a hard hand. Uh, and two, like bottom set. two yeah. just to try to get. Um, those were uh, so you're he's trying to get someone to fold out a lot of their equity. Um, but Gary's in a tough spot here because he really doesn't want to get it in here and he doesn't know what. I know about Betty. I'm going to try to remember to call him Oh, yeah, I'm just going to call him by the street. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm a, I, he doesn't. That's what's really holding uh, Gary up. He we'll doesn't know what Galoo's we'll going to do, friends, and he pref and Galoo has just enough uh, just uh, to read. Oh, it doesn't matter because he only has fifty dollars behind. But he just he doesn't really want to get in for thirty-five hundred if he doesn't have to. Yeah, the seventy hundred probably decent enough here. But he, yeah, if, if, he, if, if Galoo wasn't there, he definitely calls. I don't even think he really hesitates that much. He just I think he gambles here. First JL. Um, I think Gary might have raised actually. Yeah, but Galoo with his top pair yeah. open in. Oh, he has a wrap. He has a, right. he has a, he has a little sucker wrap. Uh, when I say sucker wrap, what I mean is all of his outs are not live. So when I, uh, that's that's all I mean by when I say sucker wrap. Wow, and it goes. Oh, Gary's not full You know, there's a ten. Will be the best hand here. It's probably it might go check check. I think Gary might be content with just with just us uh, checking it down here. He really, he really can't get called by worse here anyway. I can I can see Gary check checking here. Game out there on Friday night. It's a lot of fun. You know Fred? Oh, he, he bet it. Uh, yeah. You have a boat? You ever been? Oh, he did bet a foul. He bet a foul. I don't know. It's, it's hard to get called by worse there. Oh, I hate to go. But I'm telling you. Yeah, the, he was ahead. Uh, he was a he, he was beating JL, yeah. but, but uh, the loop was ahead on the turn with the king. He, was, he did like a deuce to come on the river. Rough night here for JL, and after that fist bump, I imagine that's the last hand there for JL. Yeah, that's. And we're bringing in, uh, or looks like another regular. You'll know this guy. John. Which uh, John? Asian John. Oh yeah. Oh, he's JMA. Yeah, no, he's a good player. Likes to play deep. Likes to play big pots. No, he's he's another guy. Um, um, he's a little bit closer to the vest than Michael Carter, but another guy who has a 
to uh, very good understanding. Yeah, Anytime I deal, I, I can yeah. tell, like, I can see yeah. like the the wheel spinning in his head. Like yeah. he, he's always thinking about the hand. Yeah, but he he, like he can he can think outside the box too. <laughs> <laughs> these boxes. He's, he he has a Was strong knowledge base. You can tell he has a lot of experience no, playing, uh, playing these like kind of games. Pretty looking hand. Gigi's in the chat for JL. Not the night for him. We'll probably see him a lot playing our Tuesday streams though, because he likes to play our big big Tuesday games as well. He's a very well-rounded yeah. player. He, uh, he just, yeah, that's the way it goes about his DLO. So they just get stacked. Yeah. <laughs> but that's one reason that's why, like, especially in his position, okay. that last hand he had, okay. it, was, it was disconnected and stuff like that. That's one of those spots We're where you can your help hand. yourself, where, uh, especially if you're not as experienced as a player like JL, probably just best to fold that pre flop. Just because uh, he, I think he was <laughs> under the gun. The the oh. meme saying just fold pre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there's a lot of that's truth to that. Oh, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, especially he was out of position. Like if you're if you're gonna play those kind of hands, be in position. You want to stick to position. You you you'll, 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 you won't get yeah, caught up as much because because of his position. That's why he pressed it. Because he yeah, just, yeah, it's one of those things where he didn't know really what to do. So he's like, uh, he just felt better to press it. I'm, I'm really going to try to take it to heart if I ever try PLO. It's just like, really focus on where my position is. It's just like, hijack cut off. Hijack cut off. <laughs> like you're saying. I, like you, uh, you stick with those three things. Um, like those three positions, you'll... Your chances of success go way up. It's just so much easier to realize where your hands are. Exactly, especially in multi-way pots, people uh, like you're not going to see a whole lot of bent like bent players. Where even in multi-way pots, he's going to be aggressive and try to take his hands down. Most players in multi-way pots play pretty straightforward. So in position, it gives you a chance to steal some, to steal some hands somehow. So it just gives your hand a chance to to essentially play perfectly uh, from that position. You're, you're probably going to make the better folds from that position. You're probably going to make the your, your bets are probably going to be more successful in that position. It, it just it, it usually it works out better in the long run. So JP does have the Mister Hand here. Um, so the only other deuce available is the deuce of clubs. If I had to guess, JP is just betting his aces. I, 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 if I had to guess, I, I would say Ben is a hand. Yeah, Ben's a hand. Yeah. <laughs> JP just move called the raise pre flop, so I knew he had bad aces. Uh, he probably didn't even have a suit in his hand. He probably was. He probably yeah, was given how many diamonds are out on the screen, I doubt his ace was suited. No, if, if his ace was suited, he yeah, he he puts in a raise pre flop. Uh, especially in position, he would want to he would want to try to gain position. Uh, being, well. in the, being in the, uh, oh, he was in the cutoff. He was in the cutoff, yeah, but he would want, you want to give the button a reason to fold um, when you have a, even when you have a hand like that. You want, you want position. The most fun game I play at. So, but I, he, he was probably at the bottom of his ace ace range there. People who don't take poker seriously and just have fun and sling chips around, that's that's what I like, man. What game is this? I got the same idea. Yeah, that's a, it's still his choice. How is he at 1%? I don't know what you're talking about, but probably because uh, uh, the, uh, the card reader is basically oh, calculating what's left I, I in, how, how many how many of the, 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 how many the players out are still left in the deck. So the math, yeah, it does take into account dead outs. Yeah, so your general math is not going to really apply here because the card reader can tell how many outs he actually has. So but one percent means he probably only had one Anybody one card left in the deck that, that was still in that guys? was still in no, in play. It's mostly Different. younger crowds, but oh. they're all pretty solid players. No, okay, another no, flop no, here, just, ten six three, pretty happy. pretty boring flop in general. Uh, JP does flop middle oh, set, um, <laughs> and looks like uh, Rye guy. We want the old yeah, Oh, because he's the only one to flush draw. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> turn that thing backward. Put JP's gonna, he's choosing to get is aggressive this with this, which I, uh, I, 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 I like because he should, o like, he should only get raised here by the top of people's ranges. So 7, 8, 9 with diamonds. Set of 10s. Those are 4, 5, 7 with diamonds. Those are the only hands that really should 4-bet him here. So I, I, I like... I like him. No, I like him taking control of his hand. The, it, it, he it's he it's can make more. better decisions now with him, now that he's raised. It, 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 it allows him to not make a big mistake on the Turner River. And we can saw, see there as as he gets hands to fold. See how much his equity increases, right? And I, I want our viewers to keep an eye on that, right? Because 
um, in a spot where you feel like you might be trying to play a passive. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. yeah. This is probably going to go check, check. If you ever... Oh, tournaments, yes, but cash, no. Okay. Uh, it's going to go check. JP is probably going to bet, and then it's uh, hand over. We're going to put in a small bet, try to get value from a king or, or over pair. Yep, takes nice it down. hand there for JP. He played that. He played that just. He played that right. That's about how you want to play. Play your set right there. Um, if someone leads, in the middle set. Someone leads. Huh? Uh, raise because the only hands that really should be four betting there are the people, at the top of people's ranges. He shouldn't be getting raised by bottom set. Shouldn't even be getting raised there by uh, the only hand that he would dominate that he might get raised by, which he blocks, is ten six. There's only, one, there's only really one combination sure. that left. So, uh, that, the only hand, any other hand that's raising him there is either, he's either uh, a slight dog to, that's a, which is a wrap and a, and a flush draw, or uh, the top set, which he's crushed. And they'll let him know really quick uh, on the flop and he can make a correct fold. Uh, Right, but I mean, so but regardless of you know, the, I mean, there's only a few hands, right? You said have been crushed, so like yeah. he should really be doing that pretty often yeah. with those middle sets because I mean, we just saw on the screen how much that cleaned up the equity when he did get it out of five ways to the flop. Right? Where, where also a lot of people make mistakes is when they when they smooth call a middle yeah, set there a in a four weird, or five way pot. Like, you don't know where you're at. Like you, you just like it, because they're so bad. You just, it puts you in a lot of bad spots on the turn where you're just hoping now people check. Yeah, so you like, so okay, so now I know I have like a nice hand. But then now you just gave another free yes. card to the river. Yeah. yeah. So everything will be <laughs> like, automated. Now you're not getting bet. any value so for your hand. They don't have to relay that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. one of those things where I'd rather you be aggressive early and have a plan if you get raised. So when they move their bet now, they hope to have the best hand by the river. So everyone, welcome seat five to our game tonight. Another new player. Goes by John. Probably might go by JMA or something. <laughs> Very regular player in our card room. The little flop trip threes with the 8 4 3 deuce here. This one has a straight flush draw. Yep, good shot. I bet you he makes $300 a month. The blue will probably just. Oh, how much is that? We'll put, he might get it in here with his. Uh, he's, not, he's not that deep. Uh, I can see a call R raise here by Galoo. Looks like he will go for yeah. the raise. He, he's not very deep, so it's one of those things where he'd rather just take it down now. Yeah, get it in or take it down. Yeah. So what are you doing tomorrow night? To Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. He doesn't want to give a hand like Dustin the right – because Dustin Where'd essentially is giving himself the – he's taking the lead while except uh, at the same hand? time setting his price. Setting his price. Uh, he didn't under bet the pot, it's but he – uh, he, 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 he must get a bet just, fold. Which is, in, I like that strategy. People will tell you where you're at. I'd rather him bet fold than check call. Because um, now he does Now he's calling, not even knowing what he's. If he's calling without, he could already be dead. But if he bets, he might even take it down. That's a pretty. That's a pretty static. Is this scanner bigger so than the circle? It, uh, it, uh, it allows him to one maybe take the pot down, two find out if he's way behind. So, yeah, Dustin played that right as well. Both players played that. Derek and Alfred played their hands correctly there. Dustin, why don't you play? Uh, oh, the way I would like to play it. I'm not going to say correctly. Why don't you play at Poker House? What do you mean? Uh, well, Becca has ace, ace, well, ten I suited. I, I did get invited from three spades uh, in her hand. When Kim was doing it, but I, I declined it. Oh, times. okay. Do, Dustin's opening up his three bed range here. Queen Jack seven six. But Dustin's goal here, he 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 wants to get it heads up. He does not want this to go uh, multi way. Yeah, Becca. But yeah, Becca has what she has, so she's. She can get most of her money here in here. She's gonna do it, which is what she's supposed to do. That I'm is. in for twenty thousand. Now, Justin sh probably is going to. Oh, he just called. Yeah, he just called. Uh, well, yeah, Galoo's not deep enough. To Galoo wants to play. He's gonna play. What Galoo should be doing here is if he wants to play, he just jam, right? Jam. Twice in a row. 
But Dustin, I mean, he's probably Dustin's probably still calling anyways. But you do want to just jam. Here. But now he's getting Dustin to call back. Yeah. That's like that's the key. Yeah. He knows Dustin doesn't have ace, so he knows his king is at least better than Dustin. He knows he might be behind, but because they're not deep enough for him to really warrant him doing this, he's not going to get a big enough side pot for it to make sense. So the Lou is probably calling a full. Uh, hold on, hold on. Don't do if they were, if they, 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 they with Dustin, I could see him uh, applying that, trying, you know what? Uh, trying the six twenty guys. I so the pot was six twenty. You're gonna re you're gonna correct that here, and now Galoo in a spot here where, again, I I do agree with um, Alfred here. If he is gonna play this hand, I think he should probably just get it. Oh, okay, in. cool, cool. That's probably that's probably good for you. He's. Especially I mean, there's multiple about... things working against him, right? He's out of position. <laughs> uh, he's not suited to any king. Uh, so if for some reason Dustin just has a hand that he could fold, you'd want to get it in now, right, to fold out that equity, which Dustin's probably not folding. There it is. He's going all in. So I can't fold it. <laughs> and we're going to see a three-way all-in here. Uh, Ace is currently in the lead right now, but... Obviously, anything could happen here. Any much two pair for Dustin trips. Less, less, six, six, about an eight hundred dollar jackpot. So he gets a rebate uh, versus Dustin. Hey, I like the way you think, but I don't believe it. Yeah, I know. Oh, there's gonna be. I'm sorry. There's gonna be a. Ten, there's gonna be a ten case. Oh, yeah, a two case jackpot. Because so, he has a thousand more than Becca. <laughs> Yes. So yes, yes, yes. Two case yeah. side pot. So he gets a good, he gets a really nice. So he did. That's exactly how he should play it there. Uh, if he's gonna play. He's, he's price committing Dustin to call off with a bad hand, and then um, you know he can see all five cards without out of position to fully realize your equity here. And he and he and he knows he knows he at least has the better starting hand than Dustin. Uh, he's probably he knows he's behind their, Becca, their, right? Their, their equities are close. Like Stop right Dustin there, still has anymore. strong equity. <laughs> <laughs> so Dustin flops top two pair. Okay. Or top, top and bottom. bottom. Yeah. That's not a good one. <laughs> oh, good one counterfeited. Here. Nope. Yeah, aces. So yeah, aces, aces and kings. Are, aces yeah. and kings. Yeah, so uh, Galoo gets the rebate, so he only loses $200. And Becca triples up. Fortunate flop there for Dustin, but a safe river card there for Becca. Um... You know, needed needed one of the eights or fives to pair, uh, and that's exactly what she gets there. The triple up, and then Galoo will take the side pot here for a nice little re thousand dollar rebate. Yep. Broke uh, even. Right. The middle was eleven hundred. Oh, trying to think of a. Blood dry, Susan. I think if Dustin wanted to isolate free flop, he probably should have just raised and and try to because 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 once Galoo knows that them and two will have a side pot. Yeah, and I flopped a pair, um, so I had a chance for a uh, little knows he doesn't have a aces there. And I it puts I Dustin, like now hand. Dustin is getting it in back. Said, okay, I, would, it's, I, I would refer to him to just ice him and get it in the second. If he's going to call. Um, but he probably thought Galoo... <laughs> He probably thought Galoo was going to fold, if I had to guess. Be my guess. That's uh, good. I hope the camera's loud. I hope it's loud. Galoo did, he had the hand he had, so he deduced the situation right. He, I think any hand besides Kings there, uh, any, if he had, like, if Galoo had weak queens, like he had weak king, if he had weak queens, he gets away from there. Yeah, and props, props to Galoo for finding the, the jam there, right? I mean, because say that, say that he does just call and it gets to that flop. Um, he doesn't know what to do. Yeah, he doesn't know what to he do. And then falls. the club, club rolls off on the turn. Like what? Well, um, Dustin's probably still pressing. Right? Dust, well, it, it, the pot's so deep at that point, and honestly, because of the stack to pot ratio, the board is disconnected enough where Galoo shouldn't be going anywhere anyway. But, but it's still, it allows it's still to, tougher. Yeah. It allows you to make a mistake. Yeah. And Dustin would have bet. Galoo probably would have folded. And uh, he would not have realized exactly, but because any time like like he, he would have he would have essentially got half his stack in there, the pot would have been the pot would have been a uh, 3k, and he only has 1200 behind. You should, the board is that disconnected. Uh, queen, I think it was queen 10 6 or queen 8 6. Um, interesting hand here. Rai guy with a really really strong hand, strong looking hand at least. Nine ten oh, no, seven six. Get a heads up. It's, uh, uh, I love I'm, it. I'm surprised that, I mean, because you were talking about how anything 9 to the ace is very, very strong. And then we have suits that's even, even stronger. Right? Right? So I'm surprised Gary didn't raise here. Is this a hand that you elect to just call in the line with? Or? Gary, well, Gary also, Gary's deep. He doesn't, he's out of position. So uh, it's, 
I, I kind of like the way he played it uh, from the standpoint of if he doesn't think he can get it heads up. I've never been on one, so we'll see how it goes. Because he's deep and out of position. So it's what about his decision here to pot it here on the flop? Having like a, again, almost like a hammer lock on him, right? You have you have top two pairs, nut flush draw, and that's kind of a wrap to Broadway. That's kind of Gary's strategy, and honestly, out of position, I don't even think that's wrong. Um, uh, it's one of those things where it's just there's so many things yeah, that, that, can, that can go wrong out of position. So you're so, uh, it's, it allows you, because he's so deep, say like, say like Rye guys in the hand still, and the turn comes in key. And now he has three pair, but if, now there's a straight on board. Okay. But the hearts aren't there yet. So if oh, Rye yeah, can, have straight, so if yeah. Rye can, can find a bet bet on the turn and river, the nuts don't change. Rye guy can probably get yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's one of those spots where it's like where you know you're at. Just try to get the money in now. <laughs> yeah, if, if he was in, like, that's what's so tough about playing out of position. I I, I, I really don't hate his play of potting there because there's there's, there's cards that you're just not gonna like and you're out of position. So you're like, what do I do now? But he does. He has. So, he has so many outs. So even if a king comes, he just has. A, <laughs> See, that's still my thought, right? It's like you have so much equity still. So. Yeah, it's just your comfortability playing out of position. Uh, I, I don't. I rarely so pot. I probably would have bet two thirds to three quarter pot. There, I still would want to leave. Like, I don't like. I don't like checking. Um, yeah, I don't get free cards uh, out of position. If I, if, if I don't. I don't get free cards. Uh, um, but I still leave. I just probably don't pot it. Man. What about you? What, uh, what do you think about his decision to not um, repop it preflop out of position? Uh, Never had that happen to me. I always get there. Right guy's been pretty snug. Time, always. So he has a, right guy really hasn't got out of line tonight. Whoops. Um, I'm more, I, but I know right guy has a pretty extensive range on, on the button. I probably would have three better. Uh, but I, I, I guess I see your point. Your comfortability out of the Yeah, so there, there's still merit for really? just calling, right? Because if you re-raise, you open yourself to getting re to getting four bet, and then you have to fold such a beautiful hand. Honestly, right? if you're that deep, you have to, it's one of those spots where if you're going to four bet, you have to be willing to fold to a five bet. So or if, you, if I mean if if Gary so three bet, right? yeah, if Gary, if Gary, if Gary uh, three bet. four bet, right guy already three bet to three hundred. I thought he just raised. <laughs> no, right guy three bet to three hundred. Oh, so already, okay, so he had a four bet then. Yeah, so if, he, if he's got a four bet there, you would be willing to four bet fold um, because that's pretty much declaring he has. I guess that's the problem of four betting, right? Because you open yourself to getting five bet, and then you have to like push just a strong hand. Yeah. Right, but right, so. against against the player I know that has a has a recently. Yeah. Uh, balance uh, balance range yeah. on, on the button. I, I'm probably four betting Rye Guy there. Two, uh, one C where I'm at to get equity for my hand. So if he just calls, I know I, I know I, I know I have at You're least. You're in decent shape. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not crushed. I can't. He can't. He can't have me crushed. And some of your pair outs are probably. Lying. Yeah, because he's yeah. never gonna. Be, at that point, he's never gonna smooth call with eight. Uh, so it's one of those spots where if you have the discipline to fold to a five bet, then yes. It's a good tequila. If you don't, no tequila. Then just call. What? <laughs> no tequila. It's 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 a uh, one of those uh, one know. of those kind of spots. Eighteen hundred is interesting. A interesting That's action here. Bad. Dustin potting the Three flop here, ball. or betting large once checked to. Oh man, I, I would have been Turn's so. gonna be. The seven of clubs really not changing much. I mean, it brings him to five six, I guess. Dustin might just try to take this down. Uh, All right, so Las Caminas, April. 1st. The Dutch change, so now uh, so five six is the Dutch, okay. and Carter checks. Uh, Are there more tables? Ooh, but there's so ah, actually can't. Uh, the pot's too big. Oh, is he gonna get it in? Ships it. Does. Oh, nice. I like the play. I love the play. Wow, a, a zero equity bluff here. I love that play. <laughs> Let's it down. Six play here from Dustin. The nut, the nut chain. Like, if Carter had any amount of decent equity there, Carter never checks there uh, with, with that much in the pot. And that's just probably a lot of history between those two players. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, and just Dustin is recognizing the situation. Almost. That uh, if Carter <laughs> had, even if Carter just has a, has a nut flush out so. no pair, <laughs> and he's going to ship it there. So it's one of those spots where once that card comes, Carter checks, and the stack to pot ratio is that low. See if you can take the pot down. Like, see if you can get away with it. I like that play. A lot of players don't have the. I don't know if I would. I don't know if I have the ball. So, so that bluff. That was, a, that, was a, that was a strong. That's one of those plays where I know what to do. Like it's like Kadish. I know all the angles. So I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I I'd like to at least have like maybe a main. Oh, so at least you actually. have the top yeah. set blocker. <laughs> remember, remember when I was telling you yeah. that in some spots blockers don't matter? Uh -huh. So because the attack to rob ratio is so low, right? Like the yeah. pot was six thousand. They both had like four, four, four thousand, four thousand. Carter is yeah. never checking top set. As the kids would say, ever. your range. With the yeah, stock pay ratio really that low, so. <laughs> ever he's that never checking enough flush draw there. If he had any, uh, if he thought he had any amount of strong equity, he's jamming the turn. He's jamming the turn. Yeah, it, like huh. if he has, but that, if that's he had, interesting, right? If he had a pair of nines, he jams the turn. Wasn't wasn't Dustin driving the action on the flop though? Yeah, but Carter <laughs> has the, if Car uh, but because the stock pay ratio is so low. <laughs> It doesn't matter. If, if huh. Carter had any amount of equity that he liked, <laughs> if he had top pair there, he gave. Wow. It's because it's because he, he it's because he only had a pair of fours that he's like. No, he had pocket tens. <laughs> pocket tens. He only had a, yeah. he had a pair of tens. He was like, oh. it's one of those spots where he's like either he's way ahead or way behind. Okay. So it's like. Yeah. He doesn't know where he's at. So, yeah, Dustin's play gets exactly those hands to pull. Like if queens, he, jacks, tens. If he, um, if he knew he had, so if he, that's why he would almost want to just have a pair of nines there. Yeah. Because he has other cards to hit to give him two pair. So with him having just tens, a pocket pair in his hand, it's not even a big pocket pair. He has no clue where he's at. Like you said, Dustin was leading the action, so he has all the jacks to aces, while you have tens. Huh. So, oh, the TLO is such a different game. That's so yeah. crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah, so it's Dustin realizing that he doesn't have a strong hand here ever. So I might be able to get him to fold here his hand like 10. Let's see. Looks like Galoo's driving the action here on the turn with the King High Flush draw with a gut shot. and the King High Flush, he has it. Oh, King High Flush, excuse me. Yeah, uh... Ben's just ben doing, yeah. Ben's just raising here. I told you, man. He finds spots that I'll match. never, I'll never Oops. find. It. So it was a raise, old spot. What is that? Uh, he, actually, he might, he might have put too much in there to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we might have to call yeah, him. <laughs> and that's that's the importance. Oh, of he's going. calling. He has to call. Yeah, he has to call. So that's the importance, though, of realizing where your opponent's stack depth is, right? Oh, and he might fall there. Which should be the right fold, because you're not beating anything. No, he actually has the right price now at this point. Oh, 550 to win 4100? Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. 9%. He, he <laughs> actually <laughs> has the right <laughs> price. <laughs> he, put himself yeah, in, yeah. he put himself in a spot where he has the right price. Ten, ten the, <laughs> this is so sick. <laughs> not 9 to 1. Right. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. a little bit under. He should have a, yeah. supposed to be like yeah, 11 to 1 or something more? like that. But oh, what's boring I'm not, at that point, it's that, like, if, once I've made that mistake, That's I'm not, uh, I was, I'm just going to call right. the 550. Call, we put a four out there? I'm not folding at that point. But yeah, again, again, right, the, the importance of knowing right, your point is right, because. Yeah, he put himself in a bad spot where he I has to call. Great. Yeah, but that's what I say. Ben will find he those. He had no game. blockers whatsoever, and he went for the ray check raise there. <laughs> hey, you, you probably want at least like a ace four with the queen of hearts. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah queen of hearts. He has the ace blocker, hearts. but not the yeah. right ace. Yeah. Yeah. you need the ace of hearts, bro. Yeah. And then that spot versus versus Kalu, that's not gonna matter. He's not deep enough for you to even attempt a block of that on his face. Right. He's just he's never folding a flush. Yeah. For that amount. Not heads up. Right? No. Uh, but a nice pot there for Galu, winning $4,200 pot, up about 200 now. Big losers still are Carter and Dust. He made up like some ground, though. John going by JMA. Dust has made up some ground. He's not as bad a shape as he was. He's catching back up. Well, that, that pot against Carter was huge. See this? Right when J-Mall shows up, I start losing. Yeah. 
having no equity there. Yep. Just a pure air ball. Yep. That's one of those things where in oh Carter's position, when when once once the stack power was going to be that low, he right, should be shoving. Right, like the call, no, what are you? Talking. You're calling, hoping it's a check, check. Like it's you, yeah. that's one of those things where you have to have a plan when you when it's you make these uh, when you make these calls. Yeah. Like like what, what's your plan? Are you really just checking blind, to see blind, if he, blind, blind. If he, oh, if no, he slows down? Like that's, hey, does have a I don't, that's not really a great for a player like Justin. If you don't tell him to slow down, he's not slowing down. He's going to keep, he's gonna keep pushing you. Wow. Well, there's a very green banana there from, from Gary. And wow, look at this. We got a raise 25, a blind raise from Dustin, and a blind re raise from Rai Guy to 135. So we got some action here. Green bananas are gross, by the way, guys. I'd rather there be at least. I'd rather there be some brown dots on it. Exactly. At least a little bit, right? At least, so you know, at least, at least you know it's sweet. ripe, yeah. yeah. At least you know it's sweet. I don't even know if it'll feel. Uh, I got the butt. Wow. Like the you feel like a, uh, interesting fact, like the banana like tastes a bad for a reason. Yeah, the the, the wow. tree doesn't want you to eat the fruit yet. Why not binding? Because it's not, <laughs> it's not ready. Yeah. It's not ready. Not? There's a reason. <laughs> another another interesting fact about the banana, actually. So the banana... Um, the true oh, banana on, on. flavor it's, it's that one right doesn't exist at all. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know about that? Okay. Yeah. Like, you looked at an actual picture of a banana. Oh, no, they guitar, look yeah. gross. Yeah. <laughs> an the, actual banana does the not banana, look gross. Yeah, the bananas <laughs> that you have in the grocery store, that's not the banana, yeah. that's not the original banana that, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, that settlers found uh, in Trop so Wild. It's like, because we, I think, because, um, you know, obviously the, the people, the Europeans or whatever, that went to those islands, they brought the disease and stuff. It killed off like all the bananas and yeah. stuff. Or and like the um, the flavor of like candy, so weird where it's like this is like flavored this is banana flavor. That flavor is based well, off well, of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's banana why flavor. banana so flavored so candy doesn't taste like banana. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly why. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So that, uh, Lauren told me that. My fiance. The, yeah. The flavor, the flavoring for banana like candies and desserts, that's based off the original. That, that's that recipe just stuck over the years. I think they just like weirdly chemically modified or. That makes yeah, sense because, like, yeah, that stuff doesn't. Yeah, the candy is a bad flavor. Yeah, candy. that's that's why. Well, and it's funny because um, uh, I found say Lauren, she prefers that flavor too. She's like, yeah, I, I like she's too. like, I like the the and flavor, but I know that's it. not what bananas taste like now. Yeah, I, I like it too. Yeah, that's what's like. This doesn't taste like a banana, but I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, but that's, I didn't that's know apparently that. the original banana flavor. Oh, gotcha. yeah, it's cool. Learn something new every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I, th I think there's other fruits like that too. Um. All right, that was my last drink, guys. Yeah, well, and yeah. like you kind of run into it, just like with like, 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 like do you like grapefruit? Range Rover. <laughs> one more drink, I can eat it's my last drink. drink. I'm never, I don't go out of my right, way. but have you ever had like an actually yeah, sweet grapefruit? Now. That's the problem. I'm yeah, see, that's that's drink. another thing. Is the first time I had an actually sweet grapefruit was um, at Lauren's grandparents' house in Arizona because they grew a grapefruit tree. Double up to Ryan here. No, but it's still it's still gonna be better than what you taste in the grapefruit juice. 